especially when you read down lower into um, how the Motai talks about how this person or this man is ruling over nations and kings. Now you can go into Satan being the being ha- bearing rulership over the earth because the spirit, the spirit, the demon Satan, him, he went to a Mashiach in the wilderness and tempted him, saying, "I give you all these kingdoms." But we already know that Satan didn't rebel against the Most High. He didn't rebel against the Most High when he went to the Most High about Job, and he hasn't even rebelled against the Most High now. So he's right. still under the most high authority. Con, con. Right back up. Con, con, con. Yeah, man. Um <laughs> yeah, 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 cover the whole whole class. <laughs> I didn't even need to go any further. All praises, man. Yeah, that whole notion is is oh. is a is a crazy mindset. Now I'm going hopefully I can connect why um this class is gonna be important a little bit today. And the reason why I say that is um, you have to know who your enemies are, all right? And you got to keep in mind that the whole crafty council didn't just start, okay? This is, I've always said this, this started from the beginning, all right? This is not something new right now uh, that is going on. Um, so we're going to get into this a little bit. And, and most high willing, I'll be able to, to humbly answer uh, the question that was brought upon me through the spirit of the most high. All right, so let me get Isaiah chapter um, 14 and, and verse 12. Let's get into this because we, we're going to try to get this class done at a decent time. I know I usually don't finish my classes. Most I willing, I will finish it today. All right. <clears throat> so Isaiah chapter 14 and, and uh, verse 12. Come. Book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 12. Anybody have a stick on? Come. 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 Book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Right, right, right. Now, what was this getting into? Okay. Um, I know you guys probably heard, I don't know if some of you uh, brothers and sisters probably heard a class I brought out on Genesis 3, um, how uh, the trees are nations. Okay. Um, you got to you gotta understand what certain things mean in the scripture. All right. So with that said, what I want you to do is start at verse 4. Go to verse four. So Isaiah 14 and four. Read from there down. Let's read a little bit in context. Let's see what, we, what, what we're dealing with here. Con. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse four. Everybody have a say con? Con. 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 Isaiah 14 and four. It says, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon right. and say, how have, how have the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? Hold that. Right. So what Ayanya was bringing up earlier, right? He basically was saying that when you talking, when you get into the bright and morning star and all that, that's talking about uh, a rulership. So this is talking about Babylon. Right. A nation that was doing very well at some point. Right. They were a great nation. Right. Just like a brought out like Israel is, is a nation as such. Right. And obviously, when your house comes back, we're going to get that glory back. Right. Because we fell. Right. Yeah. And followed the ways of the wicked. Right. So you got to understand this whole thing. You know, the Bible is written in similitude. OK. Not everything is exactly in literal of what it says. All right. When you go back to verse 14, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. When you go in the Christian mindset, right, the way they teach you this in the church, they'll say, how are that fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? The whole mindset and concept or idea that Lucifer, okay, or or Satan, whatever you want to call him in heaven, fighting war with the most high is is reported to me. Right. 
how in the world would a creation fight its creator? Right? That doesn't make any sense. So you got to go back to the scripture. And this is why we're searching the scriptures every day. Every day I try to study. I try to research into certain things. And I pray to the most high to reveal certain things to me. And that's the mindset we got to have as a people. And I've always said this. I came into this truth not knowing like nothing. I came with the Christian mindset with, you know, uh, everything was literal for what they were. When I used to read the scripture, I thought it was an actual angel fighting in heaven with the most high and got sent down to, to the earth. Right. When we know that's not that's not possible, man. Right. We know spiritually, you know, yes, you got evil, which is contrary to what God is. Right. But guess what? But we know that's not talking about in this contest that it's an actual angel that fell from heaven. And is and, and is fighting uh, uh, against uh, the, the Most High, right? So this is talking about Babylon, a nation that was at its highest peak at one point. All right. So a lot of these were changed with time, and a lot of it was done to fit the you know the devil agenda, man. And we're gonna get into the into that and how this connects with Esau today. All right, because believe it, Babylon has a lot to do. With modern day Babylon and Babylon of that time has a lot to do with these devils right now. Right? All right, keep going. Verse 5. Shalom. 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 Uh, Isaiah 14 and 5. Right? Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 5. Come on, bring the it out. The Lord have broken the staff of the Lord have broken the staff of the wicked. And the scepter of the rulers. Khan. So keep going, keep going. Let's keep going because I want to really get done with this class. But keep going. Verse 6. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindering. Right. So if you if you're reading this right now. What time can you compare this to? You can obviously compare it to the modern day today. So this Lucifer we're talking about here is an actual nation. Right? That ruled with an iron fist. Isn't that how Esau ruled our people? And brought them here in slavery? And uh -huh. till today still ruling them and oppressing our people. Right? That's why we're here. That's why we're the voice of the Most High. Right? To help the poor because it's our people that are being oppressed and are, that are poor that are going through hell today that is being oppressed by these lucifer <laughs> so-called angel right right keep going we're going to try to move this quick because like i said i, I got it i want to finish this class verse seven on verse seven the whole earth is at rest and is quiet they break forth into singing Right. You see, what happens when, before they took rulership on this earth, right? A lot of stuff didn't happen, right? A lot of, there was evil, evil was not as much on this earth, man, right? Esau is always doing something wicked out here. Now, again, we're going to connect this modern day Babylon to the Babylon of, those of that time. And connect it and show you through the scriptures, through precept upon precept, that you're dealing with the same people. All right? This is why you can't trust them. I've always said that. Every time I bring up the scriptures, when it comes, comes to them, you know, I, don't, I, I know exactly what we're dealing with here. We are dealing with the same people. Right? The same people. But keep going. Khan, verse 8. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon sing, Since thou art laid down, no fella is come up against us. Right. Hold that and give me give me our uh, Proverbs chapter 29 and 16. Stay on um stay on uh Isaiah 14 though. Stay in Isaiah. Uh, 
but bring that out. Con, book of Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 16. When everybody has to say con. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Con. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. Right. So what's that going into? I'm going to give you a scripture. Um, give me 1 Maccabees 1 and 19. 1 Maccabees chapter 1 verse 19. And still hold Isaiah. We're coming back to that. No, no. This is why the seed of the wicked, right, which is modern day Babylon, has to be destroyed, man. Esau, Edom, if you don't know who I'm talking about. All right. These are the same people back on this earth. And I'm going to prove everything that we're saying through the scriptures of the most, through the scriptures, man. All right. Well, give me that real quick. Let's let's get a little history on one of their whole, their own people and what happened on the earth when they multiplied. This is why I, brought, I had the brother bring out Proverbs. This is why they're, supposed, they're going to be destroyed as a nation, man. Well, bring it out, King. Khan, the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1 and verse 19. Can everybody have it say, Khan? Khan. 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 1 Maccabees, chapter 1 and verse 19. Thus they got the strong cities in the land of Egypt, and he took the spoils thereof. Uh, Salaki, um, jump to verse, go up to nine. First Maccabees one and nine. Salaki, King, give me one and nine. Come, come, come. First Maccabees chapter one and verse nine. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. Right. What is this talking mm. about? Alexander the Freak, mm. right? After he died at a very young age because he was a homosexual evil demon, right? The Most High judged him and, and, and cut him off out of this earth, right? Then he, you had his generals. They all put crowns upon their head. Now, I'm not going to get into the story again for the sake of time because I have other things to cover in this, in this lesson. All right. But you can go and read more into it. Guess what happened on the earth? Sin and evil multiplied on the earth, man. Right? Wickedness comes, comes from their line. We're not naturally wicked as, ch as children of the Most High, man. Right? Um, Salakia, Israel, mute your phone. I can hear someone's background noise. Mute your phone or I will mute you. Please mute your phone. Water. All right? So when you read right. through the scripture, as, as you read through the scripture, you can see so much wickedness that came from the lines of this nation, man, or lines of these people. And the crafty council is all about deceiving the nations. And we're going to get into that a little further in the class. It's about deceiving people so you don't know who they are today. You have to know who your enemies are. And you have to pay attention to them. All right. There's no angel coming down here, Satan, with a pitchfork in his hand in the hell down somewhere. Talking about, you know, we're going to go down there. That's where we're going to go if we're evil, man. Those are all Christianity, uh, uh, Caesar Bourget mindset way of teaching the Bible. And through the spirit of the Most High, we're going to destroy that way of thinking today. And hopefully I can answer my brother's question when he brought that up to me, okay? Because that's the whole point of this class. And hopefully Israel can get edified too, right? But anyways, let's keep going. Let's go back to Isaiah, okay? So I just wanted to point how evil multiplied on the earth from just the seed of this, this wicked nation. All right. But well, we're going to go back to Isaiah 14. And I think you stopped at verse seven or eight. Where did you stop, King? Con, I left off on verse eight. Okay. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse eight. Con, bring that out, King. Con, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse eight. And it reads, Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, 
No fella is come up against us. Right. Keep going. Verse 9. Con, verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirred up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Right. And we're going to get into that part later in the script, in the uh, lesson. All right. Now, hold that. Give me Jeremiah 28 and 14. Actually, before you give me that, give me Revelations 2 and 29 first. Let's make this clear to Israel. Give me Revelation chapter 2 and 29, King. Then we're going to go to Jeremiah. Let me know when you got it. Revelations 2 and 29. Khan. Khan, Salakia. No, Revelation good, chapter 2 and verse 29. When everybody has it, Khan. Khan, Khan. Bring it out. Khan. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 29. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Right. So if you have an ear, man. Open your ears and listen, all right? Because everything that we've been taught has been nothing but lies. And through the spirit, like I said, you know, as long as you guys keep listening to the word, keep following brothers and, you know, in the truth, all right? Don't, don't turn back to Christianity, all right? Pay attention to what the prophets are teaching you today, all right? All right? Actually, hold, uh, Jeremiah, give me Second Peter's 1 and 20, and 20 also. All right. And I want to enforce I want to elaborate on this point, because a lot of times, like I said, you know, sometimes when I read the scriptures now and certain things get revealed to me, sometimes I feel like crying. That's how much it touches my spirit, because it's like, wow, I've lived my life this whole time and I didn't have no clue what the Bible was talking about. Right. They cut off so many parts of the scripture so that way we can be lost as a people. Right. We just brought out first uh, Maccabees one and nine. That's not in the original text. That's not in the original Bible that they're selling that, that they're selling out today, man. Right. Right. So, Israel, you have to let me tell you, man, you guys are we are all in a beautiful time, man. We're in a beautiful era that the most high is revealing certain things to us right now. He's using certain men mm -hmm. to teach us and to open our eyes, man. So we don't be condemned, man, to eternal death. Right. But anyways, I don't want to go off. Give me our second Peter's one and 20. Slack it, Israel. Let's bring that out. Then we're going to go to Jeremiah. Come on. It's the book of second Peter, chapter one of your 20. When everybody have to say, come on, bring it out. Come on. Second Peter, chapter one of verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation right let me say something to to you family do you know it's a blessing that brothers can break down scriptures even though in some parts of scriptures today certain things are certain ways that if we were still looking in the old mindset we will not understand them this is nothing but the most high the doing mm -hmm. of the most high man right God. this is the power of the most high the devil, the, these devils try to hide these scriptures from us, man, and try to hide their history and their wickedness from us. You got to keep in mind, when we get down into this, you guys are going to see the craftiness of this wicked nation, man. Right. This is why there's, they don't, there's no salvation for them. Right. Because they've done so much wickedness on this earth. Right. They have lied to nations. They have deceived nations. They have done all sorts of wickedness, right? Destroy the most high's children, man. All right? So this scripture is of no private interpretation, man. Everything that we're reading right now is of the most high. He's revealing everything to us, man, with time, right? But let's go back to Isaiah. Again, I'm going to go off a little bit and highlight certain points, but bear with me, Israel. 
All right. Because I kind of like to, you know, expound a little bit on what I'm talking about when I'm teaching. OK. All right. But let's go back to Isaiah. Oh. And I believe you stopped at verse nine. All right. We're going to go into all the parts and breakdowns on this. Oh. Well, hold Jeremiah for a second. Give oh. me Isaiah. Oh. Uh, read verse nine again. Come, come. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 9, right? It, it says, hell from beneath, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirred up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Come, and we're going to get into that. All right, because we know what the end is going to be. All right, the battle in Jehoshaphat. We know exactly what's all that's all about. Right? If this was, if if this nation was a so-called angel or Lucifer, a so-called angel, why is it that Yahushua is going to come back and fight all the nations? Right? But that's something we're going to get into later. Okay. Go ahead and give me Jeremiah twenty-eight and fourteen. All right. Give me Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 14. Um, okay, Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 14. Can everybody have a say God? Come. 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 Book of Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 14. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the most high of Israel. I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beast of the field also. Right. What does this remind you of? Right. What does this remind you of, class, in the book of Genesis? Right, Adam and Eve, Eve bit the apple. Right, so nation's doctrine. Oh, Slacky, I didn't hear you, King. Go ahead. It reminds me of Adam and Eve when she bit the apple. With all these other nations, all other nations was doing, was was dealing with the serpent seed. Right, and give me that actually. Kind of give me you know, um, Genesis three. What is that? Three and one, right? Yeah. Yep. Bring it out, King. I think so. Um, the book of Jeremiah, uh, Salaki, book of Genesis, right? Book of Genesis, chapter Ch three and verse one. When everybody have a say, Khan? Khan. 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 Book of Genesis, chapter three and verse one. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God, Yahweh had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You see that? The most subtitle beast of the field. Now, you got to remember, and we've gone into this. If you go look at the video in the uh, um, Genesis uh, class I did, Genesis 3 class I did, um, you know, the most high referred humans as beast. Okay. All right. And the field is the world. OK, the trees are the nations. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So once you once you start connecting uh. these scriptures, precept upon precept, you really start gaining full understanding of it. Right. Like I always say, the Edomites, they'll read a whole bunch of chapters and keep reading the Bible like it's a book, man. Right. Yeah, to some level, you do get some basic understanding when you read that way. But we know through the scriptures that that's not how we're supposed to read the Bible, man. Right. But as you let me read that again. This is Isaiah 28 and verse 14. And he reads, for thus said the Lord of hosts. Right. The power of Israel. I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations. Right. That they may serve Nebuchadnezzar. Who was Nebuchadnezzar? When did he rule? When was his rulership? Right. We know he's the, he was the king of Babylon. Right. And it says, and uh, they shall uh, serve him. Right. 
and I have given him the beast of the field also. Right? So today, mm. right, we're still serving him. Esau is the wow. seed of Babylon. All right? Now, mm -hmm. that's the same people. And we're going to go, we're going to prove that through the scriptures, man. All right? Through the spirit of the Most High. All right? So don't get fooled, Israel, and think that certain parts of the scripture is talking about certain things. Give me Isaiah, um, give me Revelations 12 and 7. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 7. Let's get into this a little bit more. All right, so hmm. to get right to the point, Lu the name Lucifer was inserted. Lucifer is a Greek word, it was inserted later, right? But it's actually talking about, if you read, read different versions, it says different things, right? You know, it says uh, the morning star, the king of the dawn. And when you get into that, you connect it to actually a ruler that was ruling during the Babylonian times. And again, I can get into all that, but again, it's going to make this class extremely long. I would have to do a presentation on that um, if the Most High uh, willed me to do so, okay? Just to elaborate on a little bit of things that I missed on the class. But, you know, I'm hoping that I'll give you guys enough information where you have a basic understanding of what, what was going on over here. But give me Revelations chapter 12 and 7, Bible Shah. Khan, Book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 7. Would everybody have it? Khan? Khan? Yeah. Uh. Khan, Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Right. Now, verse before... Eight, uh, hold that for a second. Now you're good, King. You just read verse seven, right? All right. Before we get into any further, again, I said earlier that there's certain parts of the Bible that you're going to read that are not literal. All right. There are things that are mm. happening in the spiritual realm, right? That are happening that we can't even see. All right. But give me Ephesians. Hold that and give me Ephesians uh, six and twelve. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what, what we're talking about here that has a lot to do with what we just brought out in Revelations 12 and 7. But give me uh, Ephesians first. Ephesians 6 and 12. Come. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 12. Everybody have it. Say, come. Come, bring it out. Con, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. So like I said, mm -hmm. everything that we're dealing with is all spiritual. All right. Even what's going on between us and Esau is spiritual. Everything that I said, even though it's most of it is physical here, we can see it. And when we read through the scriptures and the understanding that we have, all praises to the most, you know, for the elders that broke this down for us, right? We have a better understanding of what's going on. So everything is spiritual to a certain degree. And that's just like I said, people don't understand how powerful the book of Genesis 25 and um, uh, the uh, scripture Genesis 25 and 25 is, man. When these two nations were born, right? It's deeper than just the birth mm -hmm. of two children, right? Wow. I always say this is good against evil, man. Light against darkness. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's still playing. It's, it's still playing its, itself out until Yahushai comes and change everything, man. All right, but give me Second Peter two and four, and we're gonna go back to um, Isaiah fourteen. Okay, but I want to I want to elaborate on the point of Revelation 12 and what we just brought out. Come. <clears throat> the book of Second Peter, chapter two and verse four. And everybody have it say con. Come. 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 Second Peter, chapter two and verse four. For if the Most High spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Right. 
When people read that, they think it's literal. That's another scripture that is not literal. Okay? To be cast then down into judgment, man. All right? This is not literal, okay? Give me, and let's um, let's go to Jude 1 and 9. Let's go further into this so I can see if I can explain it better. Jude 1 and 9. Come on. Let me say something. You got to understand that everything, the Most High has control over it. Every single thing that was created. And again, we're going to bring some scriptures to elaborate on this point. All right? Nobody can tell it. Nobody can tell the Most High, I'm not doing this. You know, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not doing it. There's no such thing. All right. Mm -hmm. We don't have free will. Right. What do you got? Mm -hmm. How should I pray for? Didn't he pray that the cup should go past him? Right. So that he doesn't have to die. But guess what? It was the will of the father. The prophecies had to be fulfilled. Right. Did the mm -hmm. most High listen to, to his prayers? No. Why? Because his vo mm -hmm. his words will not come back void, man. So I say that to say Esau is still going to be destroyed, man. And that's something we need to be looking up to, man. That's something we need to be waiting, you know, praying for. We can't wait for that day, man. Right. So they can hide things. They can, you know, uh, play illusion on some of our people. But guess what? We're waking up, you know, one at a time, man. And as long as we keep pushing this word. And this is why I always encourage brothers. If you got time, study. Build yourself in the spirit. Connect with other brothers. Right? Do this work. That's our number one job, man. Our number one job is not to be messing around, laughing, putting a bunch of stuff on social media, wasting time. That's that's time wasting, man. Do the work of the most high if you call yourself a prophet or a servant of, it, of the Heavenly of the Father, man. Stop wasting your time getting into all kinds of utter folly. I mean, it's okay. One time you want to joke and do certain things. But you get some brothers, that's all they put on their damn social media. And you call yourself a prophet. And you call yourself a servant of the Heavenly Father. No, man, we got to stop playing around because this is not a joke. This is not a joke, man. And it's sad that some you get some people that will gain certain understanding and they know what is to come. Right. But they're not warning their people. Right. They're not waking up Israel. <laughs> Right. Even me, uh, I'm at fault at that, man. I'm not perfect. Me too. You know, I'm not perfect. I don't do everything when I'm supposed to do it. You know, I don't go out there and excited to, 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 to do the work all the time. But guess what, man? Mm -hmm. That's why we got each other, man. You know, I don't mean to go uh, off a little bit, but we need to start encouraging each other because this is serious, man. This is not a joke. I don't take it as a joke. Some people will take it. Oh, yeah, you know, it's just the scriptures. You know, it's OK. I don't take it as a joke, man. And that's we can't do that. This is the most highest business. We got to take it serious. Of course, it's time okay. to lay back, have fun, you know, build with the brothers and chop it up. You know what I mean? But I'm talking about if 90, 80 to 90 percent of your time, you're not doing the work of the most high. You're not. You don't even call yourself a, a, a prophet, man. You're not. You're not. You're not in the truth. All right. And again, like I said, this applies to me, too, man. But anyways, I mean, to go off as I always do. So I can but give me Jude one. Uh -huh. and nine. Yeah, do that. Yeah, do that. Come on, bring it out. Jude one. and Jude chapter one and verse nine. When everybody has to take on. Jude chapter one. Verse nine, yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. Right. Why did I bring out this scripture? Again, like I said, everything is spiritual to a certain degree, right? Now, you got to keep in mind, who's our accuser every day on this earth? Right. Who's always putting us in jail once they meet you? All right. And there's other ways I can go with this scripture, but I'm going to keep it as simple and basic as possible. Right. You got a nation of one nation of people for the most part at the ones always oppressing Israel. Right. Yes, you might get Moab. They'll do their little thing. You get the Hamites. Right. You know, you get the Ishmaelite. 
right? You get all these other nations, they have their little part to play in our oppression and our destruction. But primarily, there's one nation of people that is known for constantly doing that, right? That is always, mm -hmm. always attacking the children of Israel. That will never give us rest, right? And these are the same people that are back on this earth, man, right? But people want to put that to the side and say, no, it's not them. That's their, their, their ancestors. And a lot of them will tell you that. They'll tell you, well, it's not me. I didn't do it, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything to you. Why are you accusing me? And you hear that a lot in camp, man. Right? That's the first thing they say. Right? Why are you accusing me? I don't have anything to do with that. You know, that was my forefathers. You know, I'm not doing anything like that to you guys. You know, but guess what? They're the same people back on this earth, man. Let me tell you why they're not acting certain ways and doing certain things. Because obviously they know they can't get away with it now. Right? But they still do it covertly, though. Right. Don't think that they stopped it. They just oh, have absolutely. a different technique of doing it today. They're still the nation that is oppressing wow. us. That, that was talked about in the scriptures we just brought out. Right. That great nation, Babylon, that oppressed the other nations. Right. The same nations, man. So don't ever fall for it. Right. And like I said, we're going to get into it here and we're going to bring out some more scriptures that will talk about them a little bit in depth, man. Right. And keep in mind, this was the same uh, uh, nation of people that it talked about in the garden, man. Give me Ezekiel 28 and 13. <clears throat> right? Give me Ezekiel chapter 28 and oh. verse 13. Uh, somebody say Salakia. Ezekiel 28 and 13. Come. Ezekiel 28 and 13. Go ahead, brother. Ezekiel 28 and 13. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 28 and verse 13. When everybody have it, say con. Con. Con, bring it up. Con. Con. Ezekiel, chapter 28 and verse 13. It says, Thou has been in Eden, the garden of the Most High. Every precious stone was thy covering. Right. The Sardis, Tophaz, the diamond. Salakia. Now nah, you're good, King. Take your time. Salakia. Come on. The Sardis, Tophas, and the Diamond, the Beryl, the Onyx, and the Jasper, the Sapphire, the Emerald, and the Carbuncle, and Gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Right. What is that getting into? Like I brought out earlier, again, this is a two-part uh, scripture. It can go in two parts. But primarily, this is a nation of people that are big, that was big, in, big uh, in wealth, right? Every nation looked upon them, just like today, right? Don't every nation look upon America for certain things? Don't, uh, you know, America basically sets the trends, man, right? Uh, America is a very wealthy nation. We could probably say it's one of the, it's probably the wealthiest nation in the world, right? Every nation looks up to this country. Keep going. Verse 14. Con, verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of the Most High. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Right. Keep going. Verse 15. Verse 15. Uh, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till uh, iniquity was in thee. Right. And that's self-explanatory by itself, man. Just like Adam. Mm -hmm. Did Adam fall from his first create when he was first created? No. Right. Eve nope. went and took all that wicked ways and brought it to Adam and Adam fell. Right? That's kind of like the same concept here. All right? So because of that, Lock. what? We die as men now. Right? But keep going, verse 15. Mm. Khan, verse uh, 15. Uh, 16. Thou was perfect in thy ways. Okay, Khan. 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 
Verse 16, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of the Most High, and mm. I will destroy thee of covering cherub from the midst of the stone of fire. Right. So what is this getting into? Their judgment. And we're going to get some more scriptures that elaborates on that. All right. They're not going to get away with all the wickedness they've been doing. Right. In different parts of the of, of times on the earth, they have done nothing but wickedness every time they have existed. Right. And this is their last rulership. We're in their last rulership right now. Right. And keep in mind, man. This devil will be seized from his wickedness, man. Give me Revelations 20 and 2. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 2. It's not going to rule forever, man. Uh -huh. And they know it. These devils know it. It's in their spirit. This is why they will let they will not share this kingdom with you, man. They will do if it's if it's up to them, they will do anything to extend their kingdom. They will do anything, whether it's keep you in sin, uh, you children of Israel, right? Whether it's anything, they don't care, anything defile, anything they have to do to keep you being wicked and to extend the time of their rulership, man. But we know that the Most High has a certain, a set time for them, right? They're not going to get any more than what the Most High already put together that they're going to get out of this uh, rulership that they got, man. But, uh, Salake, go ahead and give me that. Revelations 20 and 2. Khan, the book of Revelation, chapter 20 and verse 2. And everybody have it, say Khan. Um, uh, um, come on. Uh, Revelation chapter 13 verse 2 and he lay hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years right what is that mm. talking about that old serpent just like we read earlier right right Genesis. right right so when you start going through the scriptures you start gaining understanding as you breaking certain things down. Now, keep in mind, if you're new to this, to learning, you're not going to get everything right at once. You know, sometimes the most high will reveal certain things to you at certain points as you study. Mm -hmm. Then you come back to it. You pray again and you fast, you pray and you go back to certain parts of the scriptures. Right. And some of it just doing basic research, watching videos. You know, doing, you know, watching some of the old. And one thing I noticed about Israel, man, and in and, and Israel, we got to really do better with this. We have to start watching more of the actual classes, lessons, man, than this camp videos. The camp videos are good. Don't get me wrong now. But sometimes it's just good to just get into the classes and, you know, go through certain breakdowns and gain certain understanding of the scriptures, man. Because more in a, in, uh -huh. in a camp uh -huh. environment, you don't really get too much of that. I mean, yes, you do get the scriptures. The scriptures does come out. But a lot of it is us trying to wake up our people. It's not really going and chopping right. the scripture down and really getting that full understanding of it, man. Yeah. Right? No, no. And we I need knew. to do more of that, man. I Brothers, knew. man, that, you know, we need to do more of that. You know, get a partner, a study partner. Get somebody you can say, listen, man, even, mm -hmm. you know, somebody to hold you accountable. Even if it's just an hour a week and say, listen, bro, if you don't mind. Let's just break down the scriptures together, man. Let's sharpen our sword real quick, you know. And the Most High will see all that, man. You know, the angels bear record of everything that we're doing and report it to the Heavenly Father. So if you're taking the time and investing your time to get to know your God, guess what? He'll bless you accordingly, man. Right. So we need to start doing yeah. more of that. You know, like uh -huh. I said, I'm not saying don't watch the cam videos. I'm not saying that because, yes, to you know, a certain degree, you can get certain edifications from that. But a lot of times you're not going to get that full breakdowns and understanding on certain parts of the scripture. Like I said, with me getting into this class, I try to keep things basic as possible sometimes for the most part, right? Because we know these are not things that are going to basically give us that salvation, man. You know, just keep the law, right? Have faith in your house, Mashiach, right? And obey the laws of the commandments of the most high. That's what's really going to keep us, man. But yes, there are certain parts of the scriptures that we do got to get into so we can have certain understanding on who's who in the Bible, right? But anyways, give me Daniel's 10 and uh, 21. Let's go back to the scripture. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 21. I'll be sure. Um. The 
the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse, what verse you wanted out? Uh, 21. I just want to bring up a point. Con, the book, con, con, the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 21. When everybody has to say con. Con, con, con. Con, Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 21. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Right. Hmm. Why did I bring this up? Now, remember the scripture I brought up in Ephesians 6 and 12, where I said a lot of what's going on is spiritual. So there are things that are happening in the background, right? But the most high protecting us in certain degree from all these other wicked nations, man. Right? If it was up to Esau to rule forever, all nations would be destroyed, man. None of us would be in existence anymore. All the animals would perish on this earth. Right? Mm -hmm. So there has to be a balance in everything. And there has to be order in everything. Right? And you got to keep in mind, Amashiach is going to come and save us from all these troubles, man. Like I brought out earlier. Give me 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7. He is the key to get us out of this situation. This is why I pray for my OT brothers, man. They got to come out of that, <laughs> that crazy doctrine they in, man. Right? Without a Mashiach, you're lost. You're lost, completely lost. Right? Give me that. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 17. Uh, 1 and 7. Because you can go in the, old, in the Old Testament, talks about all over the Old Testament, talk about the presence of Christ, man, about a Mashiach. Right? Oh. And brother Ariyah, he brought up a couple of classes on that. And we've done, the elder have done classes on that too. You know, I haven't done any on it, but I have notes on it. You can go all over the scripture and see the presence of my Mashiach, man. So for you to say, oh, he didn't exist. I don't believe in him. Man, you a lost cause, man. But anyways, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7. <laughs> sure. God, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7. Everybody has to Khan. 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 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Right. So we that's what like I said earlier, that's what we're looking towards, man. Right? That's that's the hope that we're holding on to. Right? That our Mashiach is gonna come and redeem us from this hand of these devils, man. Because they've been doing this from the beginning of time. Right? There's nothing new under the sun, man. They're still doing it to today. Right? Esau will not mm -hmm. let go of this kingdom. They're not gonna give up their riches. They're not gonna give up anything, just like the, their, their, their forefathers did in the past, man. Right? It's the same uh, spirit. That's why you, if you notice, when you watch through different parts of times on the earth, right, they, they were doing the same thing. Everything is very similar. Mm -hmm. And as we, we get deeper into this, you guys are going to start seeing everything coming back to coming together, man. Give me 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 and 7. You got to remember the Most High created this nation. Everything was done by his doing. All right. This is all done by the most high. All right. This nation, they didn't make up their own self. They didn't come out and say, oh, you know, we're just going to do it ourselves. You know, we're just going to be this person ourselves. Everything that you are right now is up the most high. All right. But give me our uh, second Corinthians chapter 12 and 7. Come huh. Book of Second Corinthians, chapter twelve and verse seven. And everybody have it. Say, Khan. Khan. Second Corinthians, chapter twelve and verse seven. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Right. Now, what's that's getting into? Does anybody know what this is getting into? 
Yeah. Uh, Salakia. Um, oh, Salakia. Hold on a second, brother. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just going to say this real quick. The way we do things in this class is in order. Uh, you say Salakia, wait, okay, to get acknowledged by the speaker. Then you speak, okay? Don't just blur out um, your, your uh, answers, please. I beg you, okay? Let's do this in order. And right. I really didn't want to get into the Q&A, but I kind of want to get you guys involved just a little bit. But I'm going to keep going with the class. But, yeah, who who can uh, – the first brother that said uh, Salak here, what is this getting into? Yeah. Um, uh, I believe it's getting into more so uh, – basically uh, – God, uh, Yahweh has a measure to everything. Is a balance, like you said earlier. Right. And uh, it says that uh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, let let I shall be exalted above measure. So I guess like it, it brings it back to a balance. Like That's, a right. balance. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. This is why we always need balance in everything, right? And we're gonna get into that spirit of pride too, because remember, these nations are very proudful nations, right? They're full of pride. They think nobody can uh, bring them down. They're the greatest nudger, you know, you know, they, they're the biggest, you know, nations on the earth, right? No nations can ever come close to them. They are very boastful and prideful nation, right? And because of that spirit of pride, they're going to be brought down to the ground. And again, we're going to be, we're going to get that, get into that. So every scripture that I'm bringing has something to do with either traits of this nation or directly dealing with this nation as a whole, or could be dealing with them on a the spiritual realm, Right. But you got to remember, the yeah, Most High is going to uh, judge their seed because, you know, we were judged as a nation, right? We are suffering today because of the sins of our forefathers and our foremothers, right? Yes, in some cases, the Most High might judge you as an individual, but for the most part, he judges you as a nation of people, right? And you can see that through the scriptures, right? Give me Isaiah 35 and 5. Actually, let's do 34 and 5. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 5. So, yes, there's a balance to everything. When I do things now, I try to ab apply balance to everything, right? I try to do it the way the Most High will, will looks at things, you know, according to his His word. And that's how we have Shalom, to look at the Shalawan, Shalawan, King. Right? That's how we have to look at things. Right? But bring that out. They're going to get their judgment. We're going to get a couple of scriptures on that, and we're going to move around a little bit here. All right. Isaiah chapter 34 and 5. Con, book of Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 5. Everybody have to say con? Con. 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 Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Right. So the, what's, who's the sword of the Most High that will come down on Idumia? Who's coming to destroy them? Yeah. Yo, Kings. Yeah, we can't blow. You got to say Salakia, okay? You got to say Salakia. Salakia. Yeah, you're good. You're good. It's okay, brother. But yeah, let's do that, okay? So that way, you know, it just shows respect for each other. You know what I mean? Con, con, um, Salakia, yeah, it really Salakia. does. It really does. And if I go off and do that too, I want y'all to check me too. Like, yo, Ak, you can't do that. You know, because he goes both ways. It's not just one oh, way. Oh. All right. But it's okay. Yes. Yeah. How shall let's keep going? Um, give me uh, John 12 and 31. All right. The most high can use anything to be his sword. All right. He used his enemy. He used our enemies against us to be our sword. Right. To be the sword against us, basically. All right. He's used other nations. He's used other people. He has done that. All If you read through the scriptures, you know, and he's going to use your to destroy these other nations, man. Your house is an holy angels. Right. And even us, Israel, man. Right. Give me John chapter 12 and 31. Con. Uh, St. John chapter 12 and verse 31. When everybody have a say con. 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 St. John chapter 12 and verse 31. It reads. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Right. Who's the prince of this world? Right. Who's who's in rulership? Right. Who are the people that push evil on this world? 
right? You see, when you start bringing out these scriptures, you can start connecting them to certain nation of people, right? Jump up to 23. Read verse 23 on down. Let's get a little bit more contest here. Con, St. John chapter 12 and verse 23, and it reads, And Yahweh answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Right, keep going. 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Right. What is this? What's your how I saying here? Right. That his death is not going to be in vain. Right. It's not going to be like any other death of any other man. When we die, what happens? Do, do we take the sins of other men with us? No, we don't. But when he when he died, guess what? He took upon he took power over death, man. Right. But keep going. Let's just go through this quick. I don't want to elaborate too much. But Keep going. Twenty five. Con, verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Right. So what was I when I was bringing up earlier that we don't have time to be wasting. If you're saying you're doing the work of the most high, that's what you need to be focusing on. When you're not doing that, guess what? You're living your own life. You see, people think that they just don't have to be doing. Oh, as long as I'm not sinning. And as long as I'm not going to the club, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm giving up my life. No, no, it's more than that. It's more than you keeping just the laws. You have to actually do the work too. You got to go out there and help your people, man. That's loving your brother. When you sit down and break down scripture with another brother, guess what? You're showing him love. That's love. People think that it's an action thing. Even some parts of Israel think that way. They think it has to be something, oh, you know, I, I got to, you know, hang with you and drink, you know, and, and do all these other things. That's love, you know, but doing certain things to exalt your brother by you teaching them or learning with them. That's a way of you getting them out of this captivity, man. It's deeper than just physical things. Right. When we in camp, sometimes when you talk, when we talk to some brothers and everything start clicking to them, you loosening the chains out of their mind, man. Right. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they soaking everything in. And the next time, you know, they're on the call. Next thing you know, they, 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 they got mm -hmm. fringes on. Next thing you know, they're not eating pork. That's a beautiful thing to do, man, for your brothers. But Salaki, go ahead. Let's keep going. I don't want to go off. Where we at now? Salaki, Salaki. Oh, go ahead, King. Yeah, I just want to say um, the sisters, too, man. I think like that's just a huge thing, like. It's the sisters, man. Like, they need to, just like you said with the brothers, that being the dominant, that they should sit this sisters, see this sisters online because we need y'all to rebuke each other too, man. We need y'all, y'all sharpening each other up. Man. It's a lot. Right, right, uh, right. You, yeah, you're right, man. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, yeah, if to the, to the married, right? If you're married, learn from your husband, right? Take that to another sister. She learns from her husband. You guys come together and build together, right? Teach the children. Yeah, the brother is right, man. Yeah, we all we've gone through this in some of our other classes. We all have parts to play mm -hmm. in this whole game, man. Right? Every single one of us. Right? Because we what? We both have heirs to the kingdom, man. It's not for just the men. The women are going to be in the kingdom. Right? So, yes, we all have our little part to play. Right? So, yes, the sisters got to be out there, you know, with all the sisters teaching, you know, uh, each other, helping each other. Right. If you're an aged woman, teach the younger women how to be good wives, you know, or good women in general, if they're not married. Right. That's important for our nation, man. To me, that's what nation building is all about. Mm. Right. That's truly what nation uh. building is all about. It's not always about finances. Right. Not always about money, money, money. Oh, yeah. We're nation building. No, it could just be something as simple as you breaking bread with your family, man. Right? Going through the no. scriptures together. No. That's nation building also. Of course, we need the money part to do other parts of it. 
but certain things has to come first. You understand? But anyways, let me don't go off. Uh, where we at now? In uh, John. What verse? Uh, verse 26. Verse 26. Okay, keep going. Come on, verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. Right. If any man right. serve me, it will my father honor. That's right, man. And this is why I was saying with these OT guys, man, they're lost. Right? Because the Most High is not even dealing with you. Because guess what? You're not even dealing with his son. Right? Because that's who he has put as the mediator between us and him. Right? right? right. You get some of these crazy people that say, oh, man, we don't need no Jesus, man. We can just go ourselves and deal with the Most High. He's not listening to none of your prayers, man. <laughs> It's like it's going through one ear and the other, man. <laughs> right? You're wasting your time. Just keep your prayers to yourself. Don't waste your breath, man. But anyways, let, uh, let's keep going. I don't mean to go off. Keep going. Verse 27. Come verse 27. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause... Came I unto this hour. Right. So you remember when I was saying yeah, um, earlier that Yahweh Shai was praying to the Most High. He fell on his face. You know, that's how Christ prayed to the Most High, man. Right? Fell on his face mm. and prayed to his father, man. And again, that that you know, and I always say this when I when I read certain parts of the scripture <laughs> and hear what Yahweh Shai was doing, it cuts up this whole theory of this damn uh uh, uh triune man, God, man. This trilogy uh, nonsense uh, doctrine, man. Right? Christ is not mm. God the Father. He's the Son. He's a God, mm. but he's not the Heavenly Father. Right? Why would you? Why would he pray to his own damn self? Think about that, man. Mm -hmm. But anyways, let's go back to what this is saying. So, basically, Yahushua here was saying, because he was troubling him, man. But he knew that this is what the prophecies were about. <laughs> That this had to be fulfilled. Because if it's not fulfilled, guess what? Now God is made to be a liar. What the promises he gave King David is now going to fall apart. Right? What did he tell King David? Out of his loins, right? That a ruler that will come and, and basically rule for eternity, man. So Yahweh Shai knew that that prophecy had to be fulfilled. Right? So let's keep going. Keep going. Verse uh, 27. Verse uh, 28. Verse uh, 28, Salakia. Oh, Salakia King. Go ahead, 28. Huh, verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Right. What does it say? I have already glorified it. Guess what? Through death, man. Right? When he says glorify it again, is a second coming. Right? Do you know what it's going to be like when he takes, snatch up the crowns off these king's heads, man? Right? And put these wicked nations in bondage? That's going to be a beautiful sight to see, man. <laughs> so like it, man. Go to verse 29. Verse 29. John, verse 29. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, an angel speak to him. Right. So these were eyewitnesses that were trying to be given account of what was happening at that moment. Right. When Yahweh Shai was uh, uh, going through this. But go ahead. Uh, verse 30. Then we're going to go somewhere else. Give me verse 30 real quick. Uh, verse 30. Yahweh Shai answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Right. For your sakes, not for me. This everything that is occurring right now is to save Israel, man. Right? Then you read verse 31. Then it says, Now is the judgment of this world. Right? Because once that prophecy is fulfilled, it's over for these damn devils, man. Right? Now shall the prince uh. of this world be cast out. Again, the most high planned everything from the beginning, and everything has to play out. No, no part of it will be skipped out. The reason why I brought this up is to say also, uh, this is a two-part kind of uh, class. 
it talks about who Lucifer is. All right. And I've already brought that up and we're going to elaborate on it a little bit more. OK. All right. So we can know who our enemies are today. And we're going to go further into that. But also the other part of it, which is the salvation part of it. All right. Because I don't like teaching class where it's nothing but bad, 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 bad. Again, there's balance to everything. And we know there's an other part to it. Right. That we're going to be redeemed from this wickedness uh, of this nation. So give me John 16 and 9. Let's go to John chapter 16 and verse 9. We're going to read from 9 to 11. Oh, oh, no. I'm going to try to move quick because I know I know the time you text me. <laughs> there you but I got you, King. John 16 and 9. Uh, book of uh, St. John, chapter 16 and verse 9. You know, everybody have to say, Khan? Khan? Khan. 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 St. John, chapter 16 and verse 9. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Right. That's how you fall into sin. When you don't believe in Yahweh Shah Mashiach, guess what? You're in bondage to sin, man. But through his death, we're relieved from the bondage, man. That's why when you fall short, right? Like I said earlier, you have a mediator, right? The Most High has mercy on us, right? That wasn't what was going on in, in the, old, in the uh, time of old, right? In times of Moses yeah. and before that, you got killed, man. And a lot of times you got judged. Like, you know, some some some, uh, some of the judgments were death, man. And you can read through the Old Testament and see it. So that's why I said we are living in a beautiful time today, man. Yes, you know, wickedness is multiplied on the earth. There are a lot more wicked things happening now than it was in the past. But also we are in the last days, man. And the Most High is revealing certain secrets to us that we never knew before. That our forefathers, even in slavery, not all of them knew all this, man. Right? And even when they were in certain parts of the world, they still didn't know this. Right? Anywhere parts of the world, West Coast of Africa, wherever they were. Right. They didn't know a lot of these st stuff, man. A lot of these stuff was blind to them. Some of them knew they were Israelites, not all of them. Right. But some of them didn't have the understanding. And we can get into that into that again, because that's another lesson on its own. Right. The book being sealed from us for a while. Right. And it says in these days, knowledge shall increase on the earth. Isn't knowledge increasing right now? Mm -hmm. Right. You got brothers online mm -hmm. doing videos. Right. Every forms of media outlets we're using today, man, to spread his word. Right. Not just standing on the streets. Right. I mean, you can go back to the 90s and the 80s. Brothers didn't really record a lot of stuff that was going on in the camp. Right. I might be wrong a little mm. bit. Maybe they did a little bit you know, with VCR, with, uh, those uh, old uh, 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 recorders and stuff. But I'm talking about on the level I, it's on now. That's what I'm getting into. Right. But anyways, give me uh, John 16 and 9. So we need to be grateful, man, and, and really thank the most high for allowing us to, you know, for him to be able to reveal certain things to us. All right. So we're going to elaborate on some points here. Then we're going to go back into Isaiah 14 and, and, and get into who these nations are and really break that down. Get some scriptures to get a little bit more understanding on that. I just want to get on the part of our salvation and that they're going to be destroyed at some point. OK, and we're going to come back to this again anyways. But John 16 and 9. Oh, um, uh, 10, 10, 10. Come, come. Come. St. John chapter 16 and verse 10. Of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. Right. You know, um, a lot of times, <clears throat> you know, we think that because we don't see Yahweh here, that nothing is happening behind the scene, Right. All right. We think that, OK, well, you know, he's not here. There's nothing going on, you know, and a lot of our people, patience is their thing. And I'm an example of that, too. You know, I've been praying to the most high for patience, man. Right. That patience is a very, very, very uh, 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 important thing that we need, you know, in the nation of Israel, man. That's why a lot of brothers fall out, out of the truth. man. Right. That's why a lot of sisters fall out of the truth. Right. So but anyways, give me verse 11. On, verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Right. So it's already done. 
All right. They're not going to get away from their judgment. This is Yahweh Shai's words. All right. They're not going to get away from this judgment. They can't beg their way out of it. They can't buy their way out of it. Right. You got to keep in mind. That's what Yahweh Shai came for, man, to destroy their works, man. Right. Which they're still doing to today. Give me first John three and eight. First John chapter three and verse eight. Stay in John for a little bit, but we're going to get out of it in a second. First John chapter three and eight. Huh. It's the book of First John, chapter three and verse eight. When everybody has to take on God. God. Come. Book of uh, First John, chapter three and verse eight. He that commits sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning right for this purpose the of the most high was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil right uh. so that's why he was manifested everything we just read this is the whole point of it right right so if you commit sins you are of the devil man because it came from them. They, this evil that's going on on this earth stemmed from a nation of people, man. And they're still pushing that agenda today. Right? These are the wicked people on this earth, man. And never forget that, Israel. Right? This is why Yahweh Mashiach came, man. That's why he was manifested. Right? Because the earth was cursed, man, when sin came on this earth. This is why he was manifested to redeem Israel, man. All right. Now, let's get into a little bit into more of the understanding in Isaiah 14, what we were talking about in Isaiah, about the nation and their roots and their, st and their seeds that are still on this earth, even though they try to cover it, even though they try to lie that they're not here anymore, that they're the Arabs now. Esau Edom is still here. All right, let's get into that a little bit. Give me uh, Revelations 12 and 9. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. Uh, uh, the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Can everybody have a say, Khan? Khan. Uh, uh, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, or the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Right. Again, you got to keep in mind uh, where it talks about being brought down low, cast down. Right. It's a, a level of rulership brought down from a higher place. Right. You can't think of it as actual angels that fell from heaven and all that. that. Because that's what Christianity teaches you, man. Right? It's a nation of people that fell from a state of where they used to be. A state of rulership and a state of greatness. All right? And again, we you see that again. That old serpent, man. From where? The garden. Right? Just simple things. Wow. When you connect it together, you gain a little bit more understanding of what's going on. Right. But give me Revelations 13 and two. Let's go to Revelations so chapter 13 and two. Uh, go ahead, King. Yeah, I had a, a question based on the uh, scripture uh, you brought out. Uh, basically, it says that uh, it says. Uh, hold on. Sorry for that. Hold on. Sorry. It says the great dragon was cast out and that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So um, de the devil and Satan is two different type of beast. Right. So guess what? We actually right. going to get into that a little bit further. I'm going to elaborate on that. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to elaborate on that, brother. Uh -huh. All right. Just give me a second. That's why I wanted to get back to this. That way I can kind of uh, chop it up a lot more so you guys can uh -huh. get a little bit more understanding. Uh -huh. All right. But great question, King. Great question. 
Um, try not to jump over myself. That way I don't get confused uh, with class. But yeah, great question. But anyways, so yeah, hold that. Um, actually, um, let me see. Where was I? Okay, give me Revelation 13 and 2. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 2. Khan, let me see. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 2. Anybody have to say Khan? Khan. 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 Revelation 13 and 2. And each which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his feet and great authority. Right. What's this getting into? Right? Let's read further so we can know what, what, what this is getting into. Read verse 3. Come, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wounds were healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Okay. This is talking about a certain empire and a certain rulership. Does anybody know what this is getting into? Colossus. Go ahead, King. Uh, I believe you. I believe it's getting into the, um, I'm not really good with the, I'm young, but I'm guessing that it's dealing with the Asian empire, like the dragon, like far as the, um, I forgot the, uh, the time in history, but dealing with the dragon as far, far as worshiping it, I believe, but. No, no. This is, this is talking about a, a specific um, nation. It said it was wounded, right? One nation was able to stem from another nation to what it is today. Salaki. Salaki. Hold on a second. Uh, the wow. first, oh, hold on. The first brother that said Salaki, if you know you're the first one I said it, go ahead and yeah. answer. Okay, what is it? You're talking about Rome? That's correct. Yep. All right. All right. Hold on a second. All right. Keep going. Read verse three. Con, verse three. Revelation 13 and three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. Right. Now read verse four. Con, verse 4, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Okay, now, when, we, when you're reading this, this is going into different parts, right? Now, brothers will read it and have certain understanding, but a lot of times we all come to the same conclusion for the most part, Right? Now, we know the doctrine, a lot of what they teach and a lot of the image that they push, right, is a wicked doctrine, is a wicked way and a corrupt way of Christianity, right? So when it says, and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, right, saying, who is like unto the beast? It says, who is able to make war with him? Like I said earlier, what nation of people are the people today? Not the greatest nation on the earth. Right? This was a beast. The Roman Empire was destroyed to a certain point. Right? But they were not completely annihilated. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why I said their children are still here on this earth. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, and this is why you get into those other doctrines of the whole um, uh -huh. Ishmaelite doctrine, man, where they say, well, Esau is Ishmael. Right? That is saw has been destroyed. But when you get into other parts of the scripture, it talks about how they're going to be cut off as a nation of people. And that hasn't happened yet. Right. But when we get into that a little bit further, maybe through the spirit of the most high, we might get a little bit more understanding on this. Right. But give me Revelation 17 and 10. Actually, you know what? Jump down to verse, 13, uh, verse 10 on 13. Jump down to 10. Let me see. Let's get a little bit more understanding uh, of what I'm talking about here. Okay, let me elaborate a little bit. Go to verse 10. Block, block. 
Um. Uh. Yeah. Go ahead, King. Uh, you saying um, Revelation chapter seventeen, verse ten? Uh, no. I just called thirteen and ten. I just called thirteen and ten. I will call seventeen and ten next, though. But I'm calling thirteen and ten right now, if you don't mind, okay? So Revelation thirteen and ten. I just want to elaborate on the point a little bit. Con. The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 10. Everybody have a say con? Con. Con. Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Right. This is a trait that has always been in their lineage, right, of this nation of people, right? They always put in nations into captivities. They always move in borders, right, when the Most High told us not to do that. They're always taking over people's land, right, putting them to death for no reason, for unjust cause, right, defiling the land with, with the blood of the innocent, right? But keep going, verse 11. Con, verse 11, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Right. Right. And we're going to elaborate on this a little bit when I go further into it. I'm going to connect everything later. OK, but keep going. Verse 12. Con, verse 12, and. He exercises all the power of the first beast before him. Right. And causes the earth and and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Right. So the whole mm -hmm. Christian agenda that they were pushing, and again, this is reinforcing the point that we read from the latter verse. Right? So what were they doing during the times of the Roman Empire? Right. They were pushing Christianity all, all over the world. If you didn't convert to Christianity, what do they do? They kill you, man. Right. But we know it was a, a corrupt form of it that they were promoting. Right. And what are they doing today? Also, they're doing the exact same thing. Right. When they're telling you to worship Caesar Borgia mm -hmm. or they're telling you to worship a, 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 a graven image. Right. That's a beast on its own, man. We're not supposed to be worshiping none of that. That's the agenda that he push, right? This is why when you look on TV, they got, you know, the so-called Jesus as white. They got Moses as white, right? They got all the prophets in the Bible as something that they are not when you go back and read the scriptures. Why is that? Because they're trying to push an agenda, right? They're trying to continue deceiving the nations from what they did from the beginning of, uh, of their sins, man. Right. They're still pushing that agenda to today. This is why we cannot have any kind of, um, you know, you know, uh, uh, mercy on them like that, man, because the most, most high doesn't have mercy on them. He hates them, according to Romans 9 and 13. So who am I to turn around and say, oh, let me love them? No, I'm not going to love them because guess what? My God hates them, man. Right now, does that mean I should take a gun and start shooting? No, no of course not. Because the Most High is going to take care of that, man. What we need to be focused on is getting into the scriptures, building ourselves in the spirit, right? Loving one another. That's what we need to be concentrating on right now. That's it. Nothing else. Not trying to go to war with them, right? Not trying to threaten them or do any kind of evil against them. Because guess what? They are still in rulership, man. Right? And guess what? It's the Most High that ordained that. Right? But we know it's only for a little while. But anyways, give me um, Revelations chapter 17 and 10. Give me Revelation 17. And start at verse 10. Now, this is going to get into those rulerships that have fallen already. Right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, class? Uh, let's see. Uh, 
uh, Salaki class. Let me, um, I don't know if you guys can hear me on the YouTube, but hold on a second. Let me check. Can y'all hear me on the um, YouTube? Just uh, say, uh, just hit con triple seven. Okay, con. All right, so I think I just, they just can't hear me on the call. So Salaki, let me uh, see if I can call back. Let me see if I can call right back, class. Let's see, Salakia. Welcome and thank you for choosing FreeConferenceCall.com. You're helping people around the world communicate for free. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please wait and you will be joined into the conference. There are 23 participants in the conference. Please ask yourself. Brothers and sisters in prayer as well. Huh? Salakia. Um, Can y'all hear me? Come on. Okay, come on. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, who was the brother that I was just talking? Come me, brother. Brother, I was up. Come 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 Shalom, shalom. Okay, come come All praise. Um. All right, let, let's go to, um, I don't know what happened there. They could hear me on YouTube, but they couldn't. you guys couldn't hear me on the call. But um, go ahead and uh, give me Revelation 17 and 10. Come. This is uh, Revelation chapter 17 and verse 10. Let everybody have a say, come. 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 Revelation chapter 17 and verse 10. And it reads, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. Right. And so what when is, he cometh, he must continue a short Khan. So what's this getting into? This is getting into the time frame of during the time of John. You remember, this is mm -hmm. he was beginning this prophecy during his time. Obviously, Babylon the Great hasn't come yet, a.k.a. USA, the wicked. Right. But what did he said? He said he must continue a short space. So they that time, because remember, when you read in the book of Ezra, and we will I'll probably bring that up later, you know, it talks about how the old has lost his the, the, the world has lost his youth, right? So times has passed, the most high mm -hmm. broke the, the earth into different parts. All right. So we're in the list of the parts right now. Right? But we are at the end times right now. This is why you can see a lot of the prophecies. That, are, that Yahweh Shai spoke of and of the prophets that are coming to pass today. Right? Rumors of war, that's happening today. Nations against nations, that's happening heavily today. Right? There's a whole bunch, you know, famine and all that stuff. A lot of that stuff is happening today. Right? Not to say that it wasn't happening back then, but I'm talking about repetitively, like how much it's happening today. Right? It's happening a lot more. Right? But anyways, give me verse... Um, Give me verse 11. Read verse 11. Come, um, verse 11. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. All right. You see that? So America will be captured, man. And let me tell you something, man. There is nothing they can do, man, about it. There is nothing, absolutely nothing they can do about this, man. Give me Revelations 19 and 20. Let's uh let's get a little bit, let's stay in this a little bit. Revelation chapter 19 and uh, verse 20. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 20. When everybody have it, say con. 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 Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with, with which he deceived them 
that had received the mark of the beast. And them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Right. That's talking about when Yahweh Shai comes back, the nuclear bombs, man. <laughs> it's going to destroy these damn uh, nations, man. They're going to go against each other. Now, let's read the first part. It says, and the beast was taken. They're going to be taken captive, man. Right? This wicked people. They're going to be destroyed. It says, and with him, the false prophet. People don't understand how important this part is here. Let me say something to you. If you're not mm -hmm. from the nation of Israel, you're mm -hmm. not a prophet. Right? Uh, well, who was the service of the Most High given to? It was given to Israel. When you read Romans 9 and 4. Mm -hmm. Right? It wasn't given to any other nation. So by default, you're, you're a false prophet if you're from any other nation claiming to be a, a, a damn prophet, man. You got to understand something. Devil got many. Let me tell you, this evil kingdom have their own ministers, man. This is why if you notice, mm -hmm. all the nations are very eager and quick to push their agenda. Right? They drink of that mm -hmm. cup, man. They love the wine this nation is giving them. Right? No. And they're going to fall into the wrath of the Most High for that, man. And they use that wicked wisdom they have to rule and oppress our people, man. Right? So when you read the scriptures, it tells you everything you see, you need to know. Right? It says that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Right? What is this getting into? With HOY, we believe that mark of the beast is a doctrine. Right? It's a way, it's a philosophy. It's a way of, 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 of traditions and their way of doing things, man. Right? This is why we got to come out of her, man. We got to come out of this evil doctrines and these evil ways of doing things. Because remember, these are the nations that are our enemy. And they will continue doing things. Because remember, the Most High designed it that way. You can't change it. Right? You can't make what is made crooked to be straight, man. Right? If the Most High designed it that way, you cannot try to redeem them or help them and change their way of thinking. Right? Yes, you might get some of them that might not think a certain way anymore. But what does that mean? That doesn't mean that they're, they're, they're completely changed as a nation. Right? We need to uh, focus on our own self, Israel. Right? We really do. We need to focus on ourselves. We need to focus on loving our own people, building our own self. Right? That's what we need to focus on primarily. Forget these uh, other nations. Uh -huh. Let them take care of uh -huh. them themselves, man. They're already doomed anyways. Whatever you're doing, it's not going to help them. Right? You're wasting your time. Uh, Give me Revelation 14 and 9. Let's go to Revelation 14 and 9. Um, yes, go ahead, King. Go ahead. Yes, um, I had I had wanted to um, ask you a question. You had uh, brought out that... Uh, uh, the, the mark of the beast is the doctrine. Right. It says that. Okay. You gonna get into the head and the hand? Is that what you're trying to get into? Yeah. Cause. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> like, I, my my. Per no 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 my my personal breakdown of the mark of the beast was basically uh uh the the, the chip. But right I, right you right know, right. I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm I'm still I'm still learning. So, Listen, King. You know. Listen, listen, you know, it's no problem. No problem at all. OK, um, but let's do this. OK, just for the sake of time, because I, I, I always don't finish my class. I don't even know if I'll finish this one, you know, because I go into a bunch of tantrum and part of it is my fault. But for the sake of time, can we do a class on that for you? Um, the elder already got really the elder already got classes on that. You go online. He already did a lot of breakdowns on that. Actually, Chief Ephraim. He has a, a series that came out that the elder did. It was an old video that he did. So if you go to his channel, uh, just type in Chief Ephraim on YouTube. It's like, I think, the sixth or the fifth um, uh, video. It's not that long back. I, I know that. And you can go and watch the breakdowns uh -huh. on that, okay? Because we follow the same, we, uh -huh. we go through the same doctrine. But if you say, listen, I want to add your class, we could do a class on that. It's not a problem. But I hear you, brother. I hear you. But yeah, uh -huh. go to his channel. Yeah, the, the, I mean, the elder did the breakdown on it. I mean, you know, okay, so you can watch that. But anyways, let's let's get back to this and slack it, brother, if, I didn't, if I'm not able to answer it right now. All right, but uh, give me Revelations chapter 14 and 9. Bob Bashar, Revelation chapter 14 and 9. Come, 
the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 9. Anybody have a say, Khan? Khan. 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 Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his right hand. Right. So the brother just brought it up, right? Now, <laughs> what is that getting into? Right? <laughs> Keep going. Luck. No, hold on a second. Keep going. Verse 10. So like I said, that's basically talking about the philosophy. But if uh, you want a full breakdown with precepts on it, you can go to the elders. Okay. But yeah, go ahead. That's, that's what I just said. The brother just brought that up. Go ahead. Verse 10. Con, verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, right? which is mm. poured out, out mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Basically, that's getting into Yahweh Shai coming and being the sword of the most high to judge the damn nations, this wicked nation, and two third of our people that want to join hands with them. All right. So for the sake of time, let's keep going. Verse 11. Come verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever received the mark of his name. Right. Basically, that's getting into mm. eternal condemnation. All right. We know Esau is going to be destroyed after a thousand years of slavery. All right. Again, that's another class we can get in into. All right. But well, anyways, give me Revelations chapter 13 and 17. All right. So basically what I'm trying to bring out is some scriptures advising Israel and warning you. Right. To come out of the philosophy of this wicked nation. Right. Stop listening to their, their, their pastors, all right? 99% of their pastors are doing this for the money, right? You got these pastors with $2,000 suits and feeding you lies, man. You paying them to feed uh, you lies. That's ridiculous, all right? But anyways, give me uh, Revelations 13 and 17, Bob Bashar, Salakia. Uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. Can everybody have a say, Khan? Khan. Uh, now, now, the reason why I brought uh, this up is to talk a little bit about what the brother brought up. All right. But again, brother, you can go. Uh, so like it. You can go into those videos. All right. And the elder will you will see the breakdown on that. OK, but go ahead. Just read this point right here. Because uh, I know this is something, too, that you probably want to have a question uh, about. Con, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right. Now, this scripture, brother, you're probably going to have a question about this part, too. And I believe the elder did include that in that video. OK, because I know brothers, when they have the question of always oh, says, well, the mark of the beast on the foreheads and the right arm. You know, they want to get deeper into it and say, hey, listen, it's more to it. Then I know this point will come up. So, yes, it will be on there also. OK, but with that said, we're going to leave that alone for now. Now, you got to keep in mind, like I said earlier, this nation of people, they have a seed of, of, of a lineage. Right. And again, you can we can break this down and this can be a more in-depth <laughs> class where maybe one of the senior brothers can bring up. Where it, where you can see the spiritual, the, the um, I don't know what am I talking about. You can see the lineage of this evil seed coming down up to this day, right? Up to a nation of people today, right? But give me Second Thessalonians chapter two and four, right? This is a nation of people. Like I said, when you look at just the traits and the way they are as a people, there are certain characteristics that they have from the time of old to, to today, and you can see it. Right. With process of elimination, there's certain things you can tell. Well, you know, it doesn't you know, this is not a nation of people that follow this tradition or this are not a nation of people that put people in captivity constantly. This is not a people. This is not a nation of people that believe in certain doctrines. 
right? That's how you know, okay, this is probably talking about this particular nation of people, right? This is not a nation of people that are, you know, because Esau is really the nation for the most part that is the most boastful nation on earth, man, right? And like, like I said, you get some other nations uh -huh. that try to copy them and try to act like them, but you can tell they don't have the exact same characteristic. But anyway, Second Thessalonians uh -huh. chapter 2 and 4. Huh. This is uh Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse four. Can everybody have to say con? Con. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse four. Who opposes and calleth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. Right. So this is pretty. This is pretty deep right here. Right now we know physically, right, that as a nation of people that would are trying to you know look at themselves as the exalted nation, right? They want to be the first in everything. They want to fly to space, right? Let you got uh, uh, wicked Trump talking about space marines, right? Trying to create a mm -hmm. whole base in space, man. Right. Trying to exalt himself. And even when he talks and you look at his face, he's just full of pride, man. Right. That's mm -hmm. their characteristics. That's exactly what they do. Keep going. Verse three. Uh, Salaki, where are we? Second to someone. You read verse four, right? Khan. 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 All praises. Read verse three. Khan. Second Thessalonians two and three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, who's the son of perdition? The damn devil we've been talking about, right? So Yahawashah is not going to come until these devil get revealed, man, right? And what we're doing today is part of that revealing, man. Preaching and teaching this word, bringing out the word of the Most High, right? The devil is the is the son of perdition, man. This mm -hmm. wicked nation of people, mm -hmm. right? Pushing wicked agenda. It, anything wicked, they push homosexuality. It does, you know, uh, uh, murder, destroying nations, taking over their lands, right? Eliminating the nation of uh, 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 a tribe of people, right? Just putting them to extinction, man. That's pure wickedness, man. Killing animals for fun, for sports. We don't do that. You know, Jacob, we don't do it. We ain't got time for that. Right? We barely want to have a damn dog in our house, man. They're talking about killing animals all day and being around them every single day. Right? You know, and when you read through the scriptures, you know, you can't exalt yourself, man. Guess what? The Most High is going to bring you down every time you do that, man. Right. Mm -hmm. But but going back to what we're talking about, that's exactly what we're saying. This nation are a prideful nation. They're a boastful nation. There are people that think that they're greater than God, man. Yeah. Right. But we know through the scriptures, they're going to be brought down to the ground. Give me the book of Job, chapter 40 and 11. Job 40 and 11. Israel, make sure uh -huh. you're taking notes. OK. All right. And most high willing, you know, um, you guys and you brothers and sisters get. You know, edify through the scripture. All right. But Job chapter 40 and 11. And we will leave room for questions at the end. I'm, I'm going to try to go through this. It's already 1030. But we gonna, I'm going to do my best. But give me Job 30, uh, 40 and 11. Come the book of Job chapter 40 and verse 11. Can everybody have a say, Khan? Khan, Khan. Khan, Khan. Book of Job, chapter 40 and verse 11, and it reads, Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold, every one that is proud and abase him. Right. So if you put, if you're full of pride, guess what? Like I said, the Most High is going to make you the base of men, man. You're not going to be anything glorious. You're not going to be anything glorious, man. Right? You're going to be destroyed. And you can see that even with some of our people. Some of our people are very powerful people too, man, to an extent, right? And the Most High deals with you with that because guess what? 
That was the same reason why this nation deceived other nations, man. Right? Because they were full of pride and they thought they knew more than the Most High. All right? But anyways, mm -hmm. give me verse 12. Go to verse 12. Uh, verse 12. Look on every one that is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked in their place. Right. You see that? Like I said, the Mosiah is going to bring you low. Now, let's get into a little bit. Of, let's get into a little story. Let's read about the pride of Nebuchadnezzar. OK, we already know about the King Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel. We know his story. But let's elaborate on it a little bit and get some examples here. I'll try to mix everything up a little bit. All right. With some stories, scriptures and um, and, and points on certain uh, parts of it. But give me the book of Daniel, chapter four and 30. We're going to read from uh, 30 to seven. All right, let's do this as quick as we can so I can get this class done. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 30. Israel, please take notes. Let's get um, a little bit of example of Daniel pride. chapter 4 and verse 30. Love you. Nah, you're good, King. The book of Daniel chapter 4 and verse 30. Can everybody have a second? Khan, Khan. Khan, bring it out, King. Khan. Khan, Daniel chapter 4 and verse 30. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power mm. and for the honor of my majesty? Wow, you see that? Mm -hmm. He was already boastful from the jump, man. <laughs> from the might of his power, not knowing that is the most high that controls everything. Right? That's how much wisdom and knowledge and understanding he lacked. Right? But keep going. Verse 31. Verse 31. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Right. Now, why is that? Because he was boastful and was full with pride and thought that he controlled his kingdom. Right. And again, this is going back to the story of what we've been talking about, a nation that is brought low. Right. To a lower mm -hmm. state and that would be destroyed at the end. For what? All the wickedness that they put on this earth. Right. But keep going. We're not going to elaborate too much. Let's keep going. Verse 32. Verse 32. And they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, <laughs> and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. Right. So uh, the Most High is basically showing him that, listen, man, the Most High made him eat grass like he was an animal, man. <laughs> That's how the Most High messed this damn king up. Right. And the most high will do that to yeah, you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of our people are smiting with madness today, man. The curses of Deuteronomy. We see it every time we're in downtown Atlanta, man. Right. It is a horrible mm -hmm. thing to fall in the hands of the most high, man. Right. This is why we cannot have a boastful spirit and a prideful spirit, because guess what? That's what is going to cause in the end the fall and the judgment of this nation of people, man. We can learn from certain things, man, even from our own enemies. Right? Okay, let's keep going for the sake of time. Verse 33. Keep going. Verse 33. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers <laughs> and his nails like bird's claws. Right. So basically, the most high turned him way out, man, <laughs> turned him into a damn animal uh, where he couldn't even control his own mind anymore. That's how much the most high has power over you, man. So when you say you have free will, you can do whatever you want when you want it. Guess what? You don't, man. All right. The most high is in control of every single thing. Right. Anyways, keep going. Verse 40, 34. Salaki class. Con, verse 34 verse 34 and 
At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lift up mine eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. Right. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Right. Mm. You see that? So you Mm. have to fall on your knees and praise and humble yourself, right? Right. And give all honor and glory to the most high, man. Uh, Because he can take your sanity uh, out of you uh, in one second, man. Right? And another thing that I pray mm. for is that spirit within me, man. That's another thing we got to pray as as a nation of people. To me, when you fall out of the truth, Mm. you're like Nebuchadnezzar, man. You out there eating anything that is given to you, man. Nothing but lies. Right? So that's what I pray that doesn't happen to me, that I'm Nebuchadnezzar number two, man. Out here falling for every doctrine, you know, I fought going to this, I believe that. Oh, yeah, you know, okay, you tell me this, I believe in Islam, you know. I'm into the, you know, I'm into all kind of theologic, you know, things, man. Right? This is why we have to stay humble, man. We can learn from a lot of things that happened in history, whether it's from our enemies or from our forefathers, man. Right? Read 35. We're going to read 35 and 37. Then we're going to jump to chapter 5. But read 35 and 30, uh, uh, 36. Verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand. Or say unto him, what doest thou? Right. So no dominion in heaven, on earth, nothing. Any principalities, everything he has full control over, man. Whether it be angels in heaven, right? Whether it be man on earth, he has full control of everything, right? We have no control of it because he's the creator. All right. But anyways, give me 36 and 37. Come on, verse 36. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Right. So basically, the Most High made an example of him. All right. That's the moral of the story. All right. Simple as that. All right. And it's happening to today. The Most High is making an example of some of our people, man. When you see the type of life they Uh live, right, you're like, man, I don't want to fall into that curse, man. I'm going to make sure I keep doing what I'm supposed to do. Stay away from wickedness. Stay away from wicked people. Right. And exalt the Most High, man. And put him first before anything. All right. Read 37. Then we're going to go to chapter five. Con, verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his judgment and his ways judgment and those that won't be able to abase. Right. Right. I mean, it speaks for itself, man. All right. So put the most high first. Don't be proudful. All right. Don't be boastful. Be humble in all your doings. As much as you can be. I know some people can annoy you. And I, again, I'm a, I, I keep raising my hand. I'm an example of that, man. Right? That's something I'm working on every single day, man. But some people can get on my nerve. You know? But we got we to gotta, we gotta work on it, man. <laughs> oh, well, praises to the most high. Give me Dinos 5 and 20. I'm sure. We're going to read 20 and 21. And we're going to get into other parts of the scripture. I did want to bring up another example in 2 Chronicles. But I don't know if we're going to have time for that. Because it's already 1039. But give me uh, Dinos 5 and 20. Let's do Dinos 5 and 20. Um, and um, uh, then we're just going to go with the flow. Let's we'll see how things go. But Dinos 5 and 20. Uh, oh, sure. Come on. Book of Daniel chapter 5 and verse 20. Can everybody have a say? Come on. Khan. 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 Daniel chapter 5 and verse 20. But when his heart was lifted up 
and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Right, keep going. Khan, verse 21. And he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he mm. appointed over it whomsoever he will. Right. So that's basically talking about what we just read in the other, in the other chapter and verse, man. Mm. Right. Um, let's just get some points on it. I, I, I you know, um, if I can, I'll come back to the examples um, because I, like I said, I had a couple more examples I wanted to bring out, but let's go to, uh, just give me Luke 14 and 11. Let's get some point scriptures here. Luke chapter 14 and verse 11. Israel, please take notes. Oh, the lock here. I think I got disconnected again. Are you guys, uh, can y'all hear me? Khan. Yes. Okay, Khan, all praise. Khan. I thought I got disconnected. All right. Mm -hmm. Luke 14 and 11. Bring it out, King. Khan, book of St. Luke, chapter 14 and verse 11. Can everybody have a say, Khan? Khan. Oh. Khan. Khan. St. Luke chapter 14 and verse 11. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Right. So again, these are just point scriptures. Now this is a this is a two-part um uh, lesson like I brought out earlier, right? I wanted to answer my brother's question on who Lucifer was, right? But at the same time, I want to edify the body on what not to be based on that information that I got, right, for my studying, right? Because that's what it really boils down to, man. I can care what I can care less what happened to these other nations, but I do care what happened to my brothers and sisters, right? This, like I said, this is primarily our job. If we coming out here and we saying we're doing the most high's work, even to the base level, the lowest level, man, we have to do it to the best of our ability, right? And the flack has to be uh. fed. This is not about you just only doing things when it makes you look good, right? Sometimes you got to do it when it's not, when when it's uncomfortable, man. All right. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, with that said, yes, you know, like like the, the scripture said, verse eleven: For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, man. We brought that in the other scripture, right? You'll be nothing. You'll be up to not, man. The Most High is going to get rid of you, and we've seen one example of that, right? Either that, or he's going to make you become. A, a, a man that people laugh at, man. Right? But well, give me Proverbs 29 mm -hmm. and 23. Let's get some more point scriptures real quick. All right? Just to elaborate on what we're talking about. Proverbs chapter 29 and 23, Bob Shaw. Khan. Book of Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 23. Can everybody have to say con? Con. Con. Book of Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Right. Right. So if you humble in spirit, guess what? The most high will exalt you, man, in due time. Right? You know, a lot of brothers that are in certain places, especially like the elders and, and, and some of the senior brothers, um, you know, I have certain level of wisdom and understanding. And why is that? Guess what? Because they put in the time, right? They sacrificed. They did what was necessary for their people, right? So guess what? The most high exalted them because they were humble in their works. Now, don't get me wrong. They probably were not perfect in every way they were going through their walk, but guess what? But for the most part, they always fell back to the most high. Right. They asked for forgiveness. They moved on with their life. Right. And guess what? The most high increased their knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And that's what we all are praying for. That's all we want, man. Right. Because that's what's going to keep us. And again, how do we get that? By following the law, statutes and commandments. That's the basic fundamentals. That's the foundation of it. Right. 
not really into the deep sayings, the deep doctrines, the deep breakdowns. Yes, it does give you some insight on understanding on the scripture, but that's not what's going to save us, man. All right. And we got to remember that. All right. Give me Proverbs 16 and 18. Let's get one more. Then we're going to get some more of the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Huh. Then we're gonna get back. Book we're gonna Proverbs. go to um, Isaiah, but let me bring out some other things. Oh, Salaki King, uh, go ahead, Salaki, go ahead. Come, huh, come. Huh. Are you good? King? It's the Book of uh, Proverbs, chapter sixteen and verse eighteen. When everybody have a say, come, 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 Book of uh, Proverbs, chapter sixteen and verse eighteen. And it reads, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Right. And that's exactly what's going on with these nation of people. And that's going to be their downfall and their end, man. Right. Because of their pride, they're going to be destroyed as a nation of people. Because of their pride, they, they, they basically deceive the nations, man. Right. Because of their pride, they still, even till today, they still have that spirit, man, like we were bringing out earlier. Right. And the outcome of that is going to be a fall of their nation and they're going to be destroyed, man. They're not, they're not going to be in existence anymore because of their wickedness, man. Right? But the Most High, again, the Most High designed all this yeah. this way. Right? Give me Obadiah 1 and 3. But go ahead, Ak. Go ahead, Ak. Yeah, uh, uh, um, pride goeth before and like how beguiled it is, like this pride is so tricky, man. It, it comes in so many different ways. You won't even sometimes a lot of people don't even know it's, it's pride, you know? And right, right. These sisters that that kind of show how how many different faces this pride thing got, man. <laughs> you know? Right, right. Okay, brother. I, what I'll do, um, let me put that in my notes. I can get some more scriptures on that, okay? And I'll put it on the notes on the video. All right. Yeah. And and brothers, please, please yeah. don't think I'm avoiding your questions. And let me tell you why, because. I'll start a lesson and I'll answer you. I'll answer your question. I mean, you know, you just want scriptures on pride. That's not a problem. I mean, that's something that you can really do to yourself. I'll be honest. With you. But I get what you're saying. You want, mm -hmm. you know, the brothers to help you. It's not a problem. I can put some on there on the uh, lesson. Right, not right. a problem, brother. OK. But yeah, it's it's a very powerful thing, man. It's uh, a very uh, powerful thing, man. I mean, that, that would destroy you so quick, man. You wouldn't even know it. But yeah, I will put some scriptures. Most high willing, I remember. On this video, um, where you can just pull those up and uh, and use them if you need to, all right. But um, mm -hmm. give me Obadiah mm -hmm. one and three, and you can write the ones I'm bringing out now because that has to do with what we're talking about about pride. Uh, but I know you wanted it in certain contexts, mm -hmm. but yeah, give me Obadiah one and three real quick. Mm -hmm. Obadiah, Obadiah chapter one and three. Chapter one. Obadiah chapter one and verse three. Everybody have a say. Con. 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 Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Right. This Again, I'm going back to the characteristics. Right. Who are the nation of people? That like living in skyscrapers and everything, right? We can care less about living. We, I mean, Jacob yeah. lived in the hut, man. <laughs> Jacob don't like, we don't like heights, yeah. most of us, for the most part, man. Again, we're going to characteristics to, to connect it to what we brought up in the book of Isaiah, right, 14, to connect to see certain traits, right, of a nation of people and the way they do things, right? So Esau is nothing... But that nation continuing, like, it, you know, uh, started, man. Right? That's all it is, man. Right? They dwell in the cliffs of the rock. Right? Even to today, like I said, their habitations are high, man. They love living in, in skyscrapers, man. And again, it's the other part. It says that said in this heart, who shall bring me down? They're the most powerful nation on the earth. Right? Let's go to uh, Revelations 12 and 7. Right? Let me see. Is that what I want? Um, you know what? Let's 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 do a di let's do something different. Give me Second Corinthians chapter thirteen and fifteen. Remember when I was saying that even these devils have their own ministers, man. 
right? They have people mm -hmm. that do their their you know do their work out here. They do their bid. They push their agenda. All right. You got all these nations. They come together and conspire, man. And you got to keep in mind, like I said, that crafty council didn't just start recently. This started from the garden, right? And it worked its way till today. And even till today, you got a lot of these nations still conspiring against Israel, man. Right? They, they keep passing laws to keep us away from knowing who we are, our true identity, man. They keep pushing searching the de certain agenda on the TV and feeding our children certain lies, man. Right? Keep right. teaching. You put your kids in public school. They teach them nothing but a bunch of lies. Tell them that, oh, certain people invented certain things when they know that it's not that particular person that invented it, man. A lot of a lot of slave owners took their ideas of their of their slaves, man. Right? Mm -hmm. And they part uh, patented it and made it their own. And they built wealth off of that. Right? They've done so much so much atrocity on this earth that the most high, there's no way the most high is gonna go back on his word and let them live as a nation, man. He has to completely destroy them. If not, there won't be peace on this earth. Because they're naturally evil. Right? But anyways, let's go, let's go right back. Give me uh 2 Corinthians 11 and 13. Let's talk a little bit about this wicked ministers of of the devil, this wicked kingdom, man. Con, book of Second Corinthians, chapter eleven and verse thirteen. Bring it out. Can anybody have a say, con? Con. 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 Second Corinthians eleven and thirteen. For such are false apostles. Deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Hamashiach. Right. Now, this is a two-part scripture, right? Because you got even Israelites that the Most High is not dealing with, right? That could be false apostles also, uh. right? The Most High is not dealing with you, right? He will confine you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he will he will have you send wrong messages that will be for your own destructions, man. The most high has the power to do that. Right? And you over there lying to your people, stealing from your people, being wicked to your people, teaching them wicked doctrine, and you call yourself an apostle. Every time you turn on the TV at three o'clock in the morning, what do you see? Uh, apostle, this person selling holy water. And, and you know, you see Jake, you know, doing that to their own people, man. Right? Just trying to steal from them. Then you got these heathens, these uh, wicked nations, right? Selling all these napkins and holy napkins and selling a bunch of nonsense, man. Then you get a lot of a lot of times you get Eve on the on the day <laughs> buying up these nonsense, this stuff, man. You know, I don't mean to laugh at it, but you know, sometimes like when you read the scriptures now, it's like wow, you know, I can't even believe I I caught I was caught up in all that stuff, man. Right? But anyways, give me verse fourteen. Let's go to fourteen and uh, fifteen. Con, verse uh, 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Uh, you see that? Mm. For Satan himself was transformed into an angel of light. But keep going, 15. Mm -hmm. Con, verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Right. We already know what the what the ends is going to be for them. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, even Israelites that are wicked, and some of these pastors know that they know some of these pastors know they're Israelites. Right. Trust me, they've come across a few videos. They've read in certain parts of the scripture. That the Most High revealed certain things to them and tried to wake them up and tell them, listen, get out of what you're doing. Stop being wicked and teaching evil to my children. Right. Get out of the mindset of wanting money, money, money and teach them the truth and save them from their iniquities. Well, do they do that? A lot of them say, hell no, I'm not doing that. I got to make this money. 
this money is more important to me than for me to lose out. You know, they, they probably imagine it in their head. Yeah, let me bring that out. Then all of a sudden I'll start losing members. Right. All of a sudden, I'm going to have everybody hate me. Right. My family would disown me. They're worried about what men thinks about them than what the most high thinks, man. Right. We need to be worrying what about that, what the heavenly father thinks about us, not what some damn man thinks about you, man. A man is not going to redeem you. A man is not going to save you. Only the most high through the spirit, you know, only uh, Amashiach through the spirit of the most high, man. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So stop putting your faith in man, man. This is why sometimes, and that's one thing I love about the truth, right? It is, you could say, you could tell it's up the most high because it's set up in a way where you have, you are forced to study on your own. You're forced to learn the scriptures, man. Not be hand fed everything. Yes, you're going to learn certain things from elders and senior brothers and even other brothers in the, in, in the body or out of the body. But guess what? At some point, you're going to have to study on your own, man, and show yourself a group, man. Right? You're going to have to study to build your own self. Right? Because our people are so lazy, man. So lazy, don't want to take the time to look into certain things. And that's why Eve got, you know, beguiled, man, in the garden. This is why she fell for everything. And even Adam himself. Right? That flesh was weak. Give me 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. That flesh was completely weak. Just jump up to 3. Just go up to verse 3, Bible shot. Con, verse 3. Con, con. 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Hamashiach. Yes, you see that? Don't let these nations deceive you, man. Don't let any man deceive you and try to teach you a different doctrine from what you've already learned, man. Right? Once you come to the knowledge of this truth, don't turn back from it, man. Right? Don't let anything else come into your mind. Block everything else, man. Pray and fast. Right? That you be on the right side of the most high, man. That way the angels will constantly keep protecting you, man, from evil. Keep your mind away from these wicked doctrines, man. Because people don't understand how powerful that is. You're talking about nations of people getting destroyed because of that way of thinking, man. Right? You got people hating their own children because of that way of thinking. That thing is very psychological. You know, it's deep, man, psychologically. When you're teaching your child that they look like they're worshiping a guy that doesn't look like them, then they go out here and they see these dirty, dog-looking Edomites. They think that there's their God right there. Now they look at their own father and say, nah, man, you, you're not God. This, this other man here is God. And I brought up in one of the videos I did, when you read through the scriptures, we look like the most high. We look, the angels look just like us. Yahweh Mashiach, our big brother, look like us. We know that now because we're in the truth, man. Right? But are these pastors going to teach that to our people? No. They're going to keep pushing this wicked doctrine. Right? Don't know that this was all planned from the beginning to confuse us and keep us lost. You know, the Bible is our book. This is our heritage, man. This is what we're supposed to live by and go by. Right? Give me Galatians 1 and 8. Right. Give me the book of Galatians, chapter one and verse eight. Like I said, Israel, please keep taking notes, please. The book of Galatians, chapter one and verse eight. And anybody have to say come? Come, come, bring it out. Con, the book of Galatians, chapter 1 and verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Right. 
So when you get these other nations coming to you, giving you, feeding you Jehovah's Witness, right? Feeding you all these other doctrines. Guess what? Let them be a curse unto them, uh, 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 unto themselves, man, for bringing that wickedness to us, man. We're supposed to refuse things like that, right? When it says, or oh, an angel from heaven. So it's basically saying anything even in high places, man, even if it's not a man. That's what that's getting into. Don't even listen to it, man. Right? Stay away from that stuff. All right? Because, the, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> the devil can be crafty, man. In a lot of stuff that they do, they're very, very crafty. Right? Give me 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Right? And we got to be aware of these things, man. We got to be aware of these, these things. And that's part of it is getting into the scriptures. Learning who you are. Learning who your enemies are. Learning what role you play on this earth. Right? You have to know all these things, man. Because this are, these are things that are going to keep you. Right? Once you know who you are, you know what you're supposed to be doing, what you, you know your expectation is that the Most High has uh, you know, for you, and you follow those things, right? That's how, we, that's how we obtain life. Right? We don't obtain it by going into any other way of thinking, man. Right? Or any other philosophy. It's not going to work. It never did for our ancestors. I've always said, look at the example of the past. Look at what they did that was negative. Now, there were times where they worshiped the Most High, right? And they put him first. But there was a lot more times that they did not. And this is why our ancestors went into captivity. All right? Salaki, give me, uh, yeah, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Khan. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Anybody have a say, Con? Con. 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 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Right. Lest he get any advantage of us, man. We are very aware. And how, how do you become aware? By studying him, just this way they study you. Listen, they study us every single day. These are wicked men. They invest money every day in finding creative way to keep us in bondage. If you think for one second that that's not happening, you're living in lie, a life of lie, man. Give me Micah two and one. You live in a life of lie. That's all they think about every single day. All right. So don't think for one second that that's not the case because you get some uh, low minding, low frequency Israelites. that will say, oh, man, they don't care about us, man. We you know they're doing anything we're doing out there. No, they're paying attention, man, because they know that this day is coming. Right. There's going to be time. I always say Amos 8 and 11 is going to kick in. They're going to really turn up the heat mm -hmm. because guess what? We just brought it out. That man of perdition be revealed. Those times are going to start coming when every nation are going to be seeing them for the wicked people that they are. Right. And what's that going to do? That's going to stem into the last parts. Right. Where nations are going to look at them as the weak nation and the nation they thought that was great and mighty. And again, that's going back to what we're studying tonight. And that's what's going to trigger the war, man, when they all nations start fight against each other and try to fight your house shy, man, and the angels. Jehoshaphat, man. All right. And we're going to get a little bit into that if we got time. OK, so everything has to play out. You understand? That's how this works. Like I said, and I, we always bring this up. It's like a movie. That's how you got to look at it. it. Every part of it has to play out. You just got to know what part you in. And also, you got to understand what part in the scripture you in. because you got some confused fools that think that certain prophecies prophecies already happened. Uh, right. This is why I pray that I give like, when I come out here and I teach, I pray that the most high give me the best understanding I have so that way I don't I don't stray nobody, man. And I tell my brothers all the time, if I go off, if you don't want to check me on the call, that's cool. Just text me or call me and say, brother, you went off a little bit on this part and correct me. And I will correct that in the next class. I have no problem with that. 
because I don't want my hands. I don't want no brother to fall off from what some wrong information I gave them. Or some sister to mm. fall off from want some wrong information I gave them, man. This is important to me, man. I love my nation. And for that reason, I would, if I, if, if, as the Most High has put me in this position, I will teach to the best of my ability. But if my brothers are here on the call and I go off in any part, I want you brothers to check me, man. Because this is deeper than just what we're doing here, man. This ain't about shine. It's not about me saying I know more than this brother. I can care less about that. That's just me personal. You know what I mean? Some brothers, they take it a little bit more you know, serious where they, 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 they require that other part of it. You know what I mean? But anyway, Salaki, I don't mean to go off. Micah 2 and 1. Let's go back to what we're talking about. Micah chapter 2 and 1. Let's go back to this wicked nation, man. Khan. Book of Micah chapter 2 and verse 1. Everybody have a say, Khan? Khan, bring it out, King. Khan. Khan. Micah chapter 2 and verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Right. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hands. Right. So when you sit down and think for one second, again, this can be a two part of uh, uh, scripture. But we know who are the who devises iniquity for the most part. It's Esau, this wicked kingdom, man. They're constantly thinking of creative ways to keep Israel in bondage. They're thinking of, you know, a better way to make sure that we don't know who we are. Right. Keep us oppressed. Right. So they can steal either resources from us, the little that we have, or just keep us in bondage so we can be destroyed as a people, man. Because trust me, they already know that as long as we stay disconnected from the Heavenly Father, that we're going to continue to be dumb and desolated as a nation, man. Right. Uh, but how do we how do we free ourselves out of those bondage by what we're doing tonight, man? By you getting on this call every Thursday night. You don't know how much greatness you were doing, man. Right? You are investing your wealth in the uh, kingdom of heaven every time you get on this call. That's what you're doing. You're depleting the wicked right. part of your soul, man, away from you, man. Right? Uh, some people, they'll say, oh, it's just a Thursday night call. What good is that going to do me? I'm just going to hear somebody talk for four or five hours. Right? But you don't know if there's a message in this in this for you, man. That can help you increase in right. your knowledge and understanding of the scriptures, man. Right? Jeez, when I no. found out about this Thursday night call, I was so excited. I said, at least once a week, I know I can be fed, man. Right? And, be, and in between, I can just build myself. Contact all the brothers if I can. Uh -huh. Right, go to camp. So right there, that's two times a week. I'm guaranteed to get fed, right? But anyways, I don't want to go uh -huh. off. Yeah, but going back to the scripture, man. Right, it says, "Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds, man." And when they wake up, it says, "And when the morning is light, they practice it." That's exactly what they do because it's in their power. Who has the power yeah. to do that today? We don't have the power and wealth to do that. We don't have the might to do that, right? We can't say, oh, we're going to come together and build an atomic bomb and blow some nation tomorrow. We can't do that as a nation of people. Forget doing uh, that. We don't even know who we are, most of us out here, uh, Jake and Eve, <laughs> man. So you think that people that are confused and don't know who they are are going to come together and create a nation of their own? That's not going to happen, man. But let's get some prayers against the wicked, man. Right, give me Psalms 108. We're gonna read from one to eight. Just read down, okay? It's a lot of you, brother. Hey, go ahead, King. Yeah, can you just can you real quick? Can you just stay right on the page? Could you just could you do three and one, uh, Michael? Michael, three and one. Just okay, kind. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can bring out precept, King. You okay? I will tell you what. Yeah, that's your precept. Go ahead. Um, can you bring that out for him, Michael, three and one, and you could just elaborate on it, okay? I, it's just, I'm, I'm just, it's just adding on to what you just did with uh, Micah too. Okay, King, no problem. He'll bring it out then uh, for edification. Um, he'll read it. Uh, if you want to elaborate, you can. Or oh, I can just elaborate on it. But you can elaborate on it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the book of Micah, chapter 3 and verse 1. And I said, 
Hear, I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Go ahead, Ark. Go ahead. Elaborate uh, on it. Uh, read, on. read on. Read on. Verse 2. Who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones. Read on. Verse 3. Who also eat the flesh of my people and slay their skins from off them and they break their bones. Salake, so Israel, I just got disconnected. I'm going to try to get back on here. Salak so here. I know you guys can probably hear me on YouTube. Just got disconnected from the call, but I'm going to try to get back on. Salak so here, Salak so Let's try it again. <clears throat> Yeah, give me one second, YouTube. I'm trying to reconnect. Like I said, most high willing, we're going to find a better way to do this. All right. It's not the best way, but I'm going to work on that. Um, so that way you guys uh, keep hearing the call. All right. We'll try something else. Uh, just having issues with this thing a little bit. Uh, let's see. Bear with me, Israel. Bear with me. I'm trying to get back on the call. I'm trying to get back on the call. Let's see. <clears throat> Welcome and thank you for choosing freeconferencecall.com. If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please wait and you will be joined into the conference. There are 18 participants in the conference. Please announce yourself. Uh -huh. Okay, con, con, con. So, oh, okay, oh. I got dropped off the call. Uh, did the boy, uh, the brother, did he finish your point? Con, con, con. All praises, man. Oh man, Salaki, I got dropped off the call. I apologize for that, but the water for that, man. Um, the water, mm -hmm. the water. Hopefully, the uh, class got edified. All oh, praises, all oh, praises. All right, let's get some of this prayers of the uh, against the wicked. Go to um, Psalms 1, um, 109, verse 8. Uh, 109, verse 1, and we're going to read down to 8. We're just going to read down. Con. Con. Psalm chapter 109 and verse 1. Would everybody have a say con? Con. Con. Oh. Huh. The book of Psalms, chapter 109 and verse 1. Hold not thy peace, O most high of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. Right. Do who are they? they hold, hold on a second. Hold that. Um, they are known as the accusers of their uh -huh. brothers, man. Right? They're the old. They that, like I brought out earlier. They're always, always looking for creative ways to constantly keep putting us in jail, constantly accusing us of certain things that we didn't do wrong. Right? Constantly being wicked to us. I'm talking about from generations to generations to generations, man. 
because they know that a promise wasn't given to them. They know that the kingdom is just for a little time, right? So they've been doing all kinds of wickedness, being deceitful, lying, and doing everything to bring us down as a nation, right? Feeding us false doctrine, right? Telling our sisters they can be independent and wicked and whores, right? Telling our brothers they can be drug dealers and thugs mm -hmm. and hate their own brother, right? You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, it's just you guys. Pull yourself out your bootstrap. Listen, this is systematic, man. This is spiritual. It's deeper than what you can see, right? So this is why we cannot on when we're dealing with them. We got to go back to the scriptures and go back on a spiritual mi uh, a mindset, man, so the most High can fight for us, right? But anyways, keep going. Verse 3. Khan, verse 3. They come past me about also with words of hatred right. and fall against me without a cause. Right. Keep going. Verse 4. Khan, verse 4. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. Right? You see, you got to give yourself unto prayers to go against them, man. Like I said earlier, it's all spiritual. That's the only way we can defeat them. We can't defeat them carnally, man. Right? Jacob wasn't given the, the, the sword, man, to rule in these times. Right? This is not our time to rule. Our time is going to come. But guess what? It's going to be for eternity, man. But we'll keep going. Verse 5. Con, verse 5. And they have rewarded me evil for good. Right. And hatred for my love. That's right. That's deep, man. I've always said, you want you want to see how wicked they are? Disagree with them on, on something. Mm. Try it. Deal with an Edomite and disagree with him on something and see how quick he's going to hate you. Right? Even if you're telling the right. truth. You guys can be talking about this whole transsexual thing. Let's use that as an example. Talk to an Edomite that believes in that. Tell him, listen, man, it's wrong that a, you know, a man should dress up as a woman and go into a, a bathroom where five-year-old will go into and see how quick they will hate you for not agreeing to their, mm -hmm. their, their way of thinking, man. I'm talking about hate you mm -hmm. so much that they'll do anything to destroy you, even kill you for something that crazy, man. It's not in their spirit to be righteous. You got to remember that. It's not in their spirit to be uh, of the most high's doings, man, or, or, or doing things the most high does. Mm -hmm. Right? They are the other part. They are the opposite of what the Most High does, man. All right? Uh, Salaki, but go ahead. Uh, verse, where are we? Uh, verse 6. Khan, verse 6. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. Right. Keep going, verse 7. Verse 7. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Right. They don't know every time they pray, it's nothing but a sin, man. Right? Then you got them all up in the church, over there praying, and they praying to the wrong damn God, man. Right? All their prayers have become sin unto them. They don't know they're cursing their own selves for their own uh, uh, final destruction, man. Right? And they believe in what they teach, man. They believe, you know, they've lied to them so much. Their forefathers have lied to them so much that they in their mind think that they're the chosen nation. They in their mind think that they're going to be redeemed and saved by Yahweh Shai when he comes here, man. Right? When he cracks that sky, they see a big old Jake come down. You know, they got something coming, man. You know how many of them will, will beg for death at that day? <laughs> When they see that, man, that would be a horrible day for them, man, because they've been taught lies all their life, man. They think it's going to be some Edomite red devil that's going to come up from the sky and save them. But these fools got something special coming from to them, man. All right, read the last verse and let's get out of this. Let's go to other things. Verse, uh, verse 8. 
Khan, verse 8. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Right. Isn't that what we were talking about earlier? Right? Let his days be cursed, man. Right. Let it be shortened. That's what we pray for. Right? Let his days not last in this word, man. We need to take over and take rulership, man, through the spirit of the Most High, man. Right? We're tired of them ruling, man. Everything they do is wicked, man. Every law they pass is wicked. Give me that, Isaiah 10 and 1, man. Wicked, wicked laws. Bunch of laws to oppress people. Bunch of laws to benefit themselves and their own, and their own people. When they stole this land, guess who they called? All the devils to come over here and buy lands for nothing. They were giving lands for free. These bastards were killing the Indians, our brothers, so-called Indians, right, which we know is the Northern Kingdom, our own brothers and sisters, and bringing their old wicked devil, stinking dog selves to come over here and get lands for nothing. And you tell me I should love that beast. Black Israel. Um, yeah, let's... Uh, right. Yeah, um, let's... Um, yeah, what did I call for you to bring again? Salakia. Uh -huh. Khan, you good? Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Right, yeah, bring that out. Khan, book of Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 1. When everybody have a say, Khan? 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 Khan, Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Woe to them that decree unrighteous decrees. Right. And that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Right. That's exactly what they've done. They write on righteous degree, decrees, like I said earlier, that benefits them as a people. Right. And grieves other people. And who does he grieves primarily? The children of Israel, man. They always pass in laws against us, man. Right. They'll say, OK, if cocaine is in powder substance, you get less time. Once you cook it, now you get more time. Right. Hotel Pro, uh, Hotel Pro, man, passing all wicked laws, man. When uh, 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 Jake will commit one crime, then a damn Edomite will commit one. And guess what? He gets probation, a uh, uh, slap in the wrist, and Jake goes to jail for 15, 20 years for the same damn crime. Those are grievous laws, man. And they know what uh, they're doing. So don't take your sight off who your enemy is, man. That's primarily what this class is about. I mean, yes, I did want it to pinpoint on who Lucifer is, but it's primarily to wake up my people, man. Know who your enemies, man, are. Teach. You know, honestly, man, know who they are. That's part of this walk, man. Don't think for one second, oh, it's about mm -hmm. me just doing this and doing that, and that's it. No, part of it, too, is know who your damn enemies are, man, and take heed of them, man. Because guess what? Isn't that how they took rulership over all the nations? They came loving, hugging, giving, bearing gifts, kissing, and everything, right? And before you know it, you got syphilis in your nation. Before you know it, your wives are all killed and ravished. Before you know it, your children are burnt and their head dashed into pieces on rocks. Before you know it, your wives are hung on trees, man. Before you know it, your, your family are, are, are brutally killed, man. Man, some of this, I was reading this, I, I got to get the book. It's about this Irish devil woman. She literally would buy slaves to experiment with them. She was from Louis. She lived in Louisiana, a German woman. I got to get the, the book. I was reading it in archives.org. And a lot of this stuff I bring out, I got to try to put some uh, notes on them. So I, if I bring them in class, I can give them to you guys so you guys can research it yourself, man. She was doing all types of atrocity to our women, man. It was primarily our women. Right? Uh. You got to remember these things, man. This is what's going to keep you. Not you forgetting who you are. Not you loving them and thinking that, oh, they're going to change and be better people. That's not going to happen, man. All right? I can't I can't warn you enough. Lock, you King. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, King. Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, just, to, just to add on what you were saying, man, like, um, you know, like you said, you know, you got to put your people first, love your people, because there's like, there's a love, will, the, the love will automatically show you who to hate. If that, right. that makes sense to y'all, if right. you love your own people, it, 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 there's, a, there's a righteous hate. So if you love your own people or pure love your own people, you automatically going to hate, hate the thing that's hurting it just like your child. 
you got a child, uh-huh. somebody hurting your child, you're right. gonna you gonna you gonna hate the person that's doing it. So before we even gotta even think about hate, but we can just love each other, the hate gonna come naturally. It's a natural hate. It's a righteous hate. That's what that's what I always preach in my household. Um that's it on that. That's right, King. Uh-huh. It's a righteous hate. Guess uh-huh. what? Our father hates them, we hate them too. Uh-huh. That's the way I look at it. Okay, I don't look at it any other way. Uh-huh. If the most high hates them, guess what? I hate them. Why in the world would my father hate them? Then I love them. Uh-huh. What kind of thing is that? Uh-huh. That's retarded, man. It's just like uh-huh. my son right uh-huh. now. If I tell him we're not going over there because of this is going to happen to us, guess what? He's going to follow my ways. I can even see it now. When he see me studying, he'll go in the corner and he got his own Bible writing scriptures down. Right? Then he comes to me and shows me what uh-huh. he's been writing. Because why? He's copying my way. And guess what? That's exactly what I want. I want him to be hell on these devils, man. So like it. Give me Syrac. Let's go to Syrac 10 and 1. Let me see if that's what I want. Let me get the scripture. Syrac chapter 10 and verse 1. Let me see. Let me make sure. So like it. Let me see. Um, give me one second. Let me see for what I want. So like it, King. Why you doing that? Yeah, That's go ahead. That's one of the reasons why it's so hard for us to hate him, please. It's so hard for us to hate him because we don't love each other enough. Right. So it's hard for you to hate him if you don't, you don't love yourself enough. You don't love your own people enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, right right that's that's exactly what it is and again when i brought up earlier when you teaching your children these wicked doctrines right when you teaching them that yahweh shai is a is a red devil right guess what they're not going to love their own people right they're not going to love their own people they're going to hate uh, their own people give me it's Sirach 30 and start in verse 1 Right. They're going to look at their own people as as the, the and, you know, I know you guys seen the experiment of the of the of the of the little Eve uh, uh, child with with the dogs, man. Right. When they tell her to choose a, 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 um a, a Edomite doll or, or an Eve doll, man. Right. What does she do? She chooses the damn Edomite dog and says that's the better dog. We don't know how that messes up our kids psychologically, man. Right? When our sisters put weave on their damn head, then they turn around and put blind weave. When we know that that's a damn curse, man. Put that nonsense on your head. Uh, right. Right. Then you got these uh, wicked brothers... All they do in their mind is constant hate for their brothers. Every time you're dealing with them, it's hate, hate, hate. But a lot of that comes from the oppression, man. A lot of that comes from this false doctrine we get taught growing up, man. You know? We got to try to have more love for each other, man, Israel. But anyways, let's bring out this scripture just to elaborate on the point that I brought out earlier about my son. Uh, Ecclesiasticus 30 and 1. Or Syrac 30 and 1. Bring it out. We're going to read down. Come on. Like, Book of Syrac 30 and verse 1. Uh, hold on a second. Anybody have a uh, Brother, you said Salak here. What, what do you got to bring out? Uh, I, I, I can't find the Book of Syrac. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm overlooking it or, you know. Okay. Do you have the um, you have the King James Version, right? Uh, yes, brother. Okay, look under Ecclesiasticus 30. Ecclesiasticus. Do you have the Apocrypha or no? Yeah, I have the uh, the Bible that with the Apocrypha in it. You do have the Apocrypha? Okay, yeah, it should be on there. So look under Ecclesiasticus or Syrac. It's the same book. Is it spelled? Is it spelled? Oh, it's the same book? Ecclesiasticus? Yeah, Ecclesiasticus. It's a locket class. Let's okay. make sure the brother got the scripture. Yeah, let me know once you see it. Um, yeah, I see Ecclesiasticus. Okay, calm. We're starting at verse 30, okay? This is just to elaborate. This is off the, what we're talking about. It's just to elaborate on the point of my son, okay? But go ahead. Bring it out. Syrac 31. Khan, 
the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 1. Everybody have a say, Khan? Khan. 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 Book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 1. He that loveth his son causeth him off to feel the rod that he may have joy of him in the end. Now, what is that getting into? Right? Raise your children as they should grow, right? Right? Don't be always feeling sorry for them and everything. If they do wrong, there's nothing wrong with correcting them with pride, man. Now, we're not talking about abusing your children, mm -hmm. right? Because you get some parents, they take it way overboard, man. Right? You got to know how to do that. And right. I don't, me personally, I don't get into that all the time. All right? And you have to really do something really bad for me to do that. All right? I don't get into all that. All right? You know, sometimes mm -hmm. your words and just the way you move around your children can correct a lot of bad behavior. Right? But anyways, everybody has their right. own way of raising their children and what works best for them in their household. So we're not going to get into that. But you guys get the point. Keep going. Verse uh, 2. Come on, verse 2. He that chastiseth his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. Right. You see that? When you raise your child properly at home, when he reads the scriptures, he already know how to act. At a very young age, he will acquire wisdom. Just like who? Yahawashai. Yahawashai was very, he was confounding, right? Men in high places, man. At 12 years old, at 13 years old. Why? Because he grew in wisdom. He got wisdom. Most I blessed him with that. So that's the same that I pray for my son, that he'll be a greater man 10,000 times than the man I am. Right? That's the prayer I pray every day. Verse 3, keep going. Come on, verse 3. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy, mm. and before his friends rejoice of him. Right. So if you're teaching your son how to, how to grow, how not to worship Caesar Borgia, how to know who he is, that he's an Israelite, right? Right? Prince of power, man. He comes from royalty, from nations of king and priest, man. Right? You teach him how much he's worth. And this is to your daughters, too. What I'm saying right now goes both ways, but I'm just using my son as an example. Same thing with your daughters, even more so, man. Right? Mm. And what happened? Before your friends, you can rejoice about him. You, your friends can look at him and be like, man, you got a great son, man. And he does what you tell him. I mean, you don't even have to repeat yourself, brother. Man, he going, you know, he, he understands that scripture. He can do the breakdown on this scripture. And he's actually living that life. My son finds joy in wearing mm -hmm. his fringes every day, man. You know, it'll be like, Dad, I, I'm rocking my fringes, man. I, I asked him, yeah, you got your, yep, got it on. You know, because that's something I've already taught him to do. That that's something that we have to do as a nation of people, man. We have to obey the laws and the statutes and command of the Most High. But guess what happens? It's more than that. Keep going. Verse 4. There's more to it. Con, verse 4. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. For he had left one behind him that is like himself. Whoa, you see that? Basically, you've left a carbon copy of yourself, man. So if you live righteously on this earth, right. guess what? When you pass, your son is going to continue that same way, man. And this was what the Most High mm. was trying to lead us to, right? Because we are what? A holy people. We are set apart from these other nations, man. We're not supposed to copy their ways. And it's the same thing with my son. If I die and imagine, I know this won't happen, but imagine if I see how he lives his life and all of a sudden... All he does is does the, the you know copies the ways of the heathens, man. Right? Following the ways of the oppressors, right? Right? Proverbs 3 and 31. Doing their ways, thinking that that's how he's supposed to live. You know how that would grieve me as a father? Right? Because that's not what I taught him. Right? Go to verse 5. Then after this, we're going to get out of this and go back to our class. Verse 5. Come on. Verse 5. While he liveth, he saw and rejoiced in him. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. Right. What's that getting into? So while he lives, he you know, exudes the example of the Most High, reflects the Most High. Not primarily me. I'm talking about the ways of the Heavenly Father, right? Through the scriptures from what he's been learning. 
Because sometimes your, your children can compass you in this wisdom and understanding, man. Right? Yeah. And I can see traits of that already, of him bringing out certain scriptures <laughs> and trying to precept certain scriptures. Right? Right. He'll write a whole, like tonight, he wrote a whole bunch of scriptures and was, <laughs> if I can add this to the class, man. You know, it's a beautiful thing to see that, man. You know, and I'm not just saying this because this is my own family, but I pray that brothers and sisters, that this are the kind of life that we want for our children, man. Right? And I know he's going to do certain uh-huh. things in his life that are going to go off. I know that. I'm not naive. But guess what? We got the scriptures to go back and get that correction from. Right? But anyways, drop that. We're done with that. But you guys get the point, man. Raise your children the way... That is approved of the most high. And how do you do that? Through the scripture. You go through the council, right? The scriptures is our council. That's where we get the you know wisdom and understanding of how we're supposed to govern ourselves, raise our children, right? And live as a people, man. No other way. No other book can do it for you. Love you. The, the unholy Quran definitely can't do it for you because a lot of our people are indulging that nonsense, man. And their children turn around to be a bunch mm-hmm. of gangsters and wicked people, man. And you wonder why your children are wicked. Ah. Because you are worshiping a wicked God. So like you. All right, let's go to, um, yeah, go ahead, King. Khan, um, it's a brother I was of, man. I just want to just finish out on uh, that verse six. Just okay. to finish I know, out I know, it does get better, King. <laughs> I know, I only left that <laughs> because of the sake of time. Well, I got you. Go ahead. Go back to right. Sirach 30 and 6. Okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and finish it. I'm sorry. I know I know it does get better. But I just got to get out of it because of uh, I still got a few things to cover. But we're good, though. Go ahead. Sirach 30 and 6. Uh, let me just let me, uh, read that real quick for you, King. Uh, Sirach 30 and 6, it says, He left behind him an avenger against his enemies and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, God. Um, yeah, that's, that's, like the that's a bad man, man, you know. That's, that's the future right there. Boy. Con, con, con. Like the brother said, man, left behind him a carbon copy. He gonna be having, he gonna be watching his father, right? Watching his dad break down precepts, break down scriptures, you know, telling Telling Esau he's the devil to his face, right? Lifting up the nation of Israel. And then when the time comes, he's going to be just like his father. Right. Being an avenger and being a, a, a damn pest and destroying these enemies, man. Destroying these other nations. And he's going to requite kindness to his friends. He's going to show love to his brothers and sisters, the nation of Israel. He's going to be taught by his father to love his people, man. And no one else right so i just wanted to just uh finish out that quick uh six verse that's so right, you, king. you got it that's right king all praise is water for that man that's true man that's what you're gonna leave now keep in mind everything that we're reading here applies to the sisters too all right we're just using a uh, masculine mm-hmm. uh way of saying it just because of how the scriptures is written but guess what it applies to the sisters too right the sisters can do the exact same things uh-huh. when it comes to their daughters and their sons Right. I've always said the women are the first teachers. These are very important people in our nation. Right. We can't build our nation without our sisters. All right. So, again, I I find myself having to bring that up because I want our sisters to know they're part of this walk. You are very, very important. So just the same thing the father is teaching the son. Guess what? You when the father steps out of the house, what you're doing is you're reinforcing that because what? He's the head of the household. Right. He's getting his information from the from Yahweh Shai. And from there, he, he passes it on to his children and to you. Right? right. I see my wife, my rib, she does the same thing. She'll correct certain things that say, say the same things that I say. That's a helpmate. Mm-hmm. A helpmate is not someone that gives you hell every day, man. Oh. Right? A helpmate is someone right. that sees <laughs> the most high's will and see the spirit working through you. And every decision that you're making is out of the word of the most high and obeys that and follows that. Right? right. That's how this how works, man. It's order to everything in this kingdom, man. Right? The most high deals with order. He doesn't deal with confusion. 
That's why when you get into the doctrines and the ways of this world and the philosophy and the thinking of this nation, it's nothing but a bunch of confusion. You're going to get lost in a deep pit messing with them, man. Right? But the Most High's word is consistent and true. We know what we're going to get out of it. Right? With this world, this Skittle mixed up world, you don't know what you're getting. All right, Salaki. I, I see, I got to catch myself going off. Anyways, let's go back to the scriptures. Ah, you good. You good. Let's, let's you go good. back to the class. Yeah, because I'm trying to wrap it up. Um, I know I said one o'clock, but I just remember the brother said he's gonna be uh, on here till twelve thirty. But we'll 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 try to stretch it out that oh, yeah. long. But anyways, let's go back to Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah real quick. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I just I'm just adding on what you're saying, man. Um, just about you know as, as far as as far as like in Proverbs 13, like I said, good man leaving inheritance for his children's children. That's right. And wealth for a sinner. So and wealth for a sinner is laid up in, in, in um for the just. That wealth is these laws and commandments. So like you were saying, man, if you if you leave, if you raise up your child, the greatest thing ever is your child raise up his child in the same manner and so on and so on and so on. And that's how you you know, and, and that's how this nation becomes what, what it's supposed to be. That's like, right. Parenting man. is the right. most important part of all of this, man. That's right, King. Important part. Of that's right. King. That's right. That's right. That, that's grievous to the enemy, man. That's why I remember when I brought up earlier that they will spend billions of dollars every year to keep you blind, man. They'll spend tons of money, come up with ideas. I mean, they got think tanks that that's all they do, literally, man. It's coming up with ideas constantly every single day to keep us in bondage, to keep our people, our, our kids in drugs, right? Bank gang bangers and wicked man against each other. So how do you counter that? It's all spiritual, man. We can't counter it with money. You ain't got enough money like Esau does. You can forget that. That's not an option. But guess what you got? The knowledge and understanding of the scriptures, man. And you can pass that to your children, like you said. That's and right. your children can become a weapon against them, man, and be grievous to them. Oh, now you're raising a generation of oh. children that are not going to fall into their wicked doctrine, man. Right? Mm -hmm. All these damn abortion so clinics will be shutting down. All these damn wicked abortion clinics they always put in, in our damn neighborhoods to kill our damn babies, man. I like it, man. Bring it right. out. Uh, let's go back to the let's go back to um Isaiah 14. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Actually, bring out verse 12 again. Then I want you to hold Luke 10 and 18. So like it, class. I, I apologize if I go off. But let's, uh, we're going to stay on point. That way we can wrap up the Lock class. Uh, let me see how much more do I have. Wow, I still got a few. All right, go ahead, King. Con, it's the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 14. What verse you want, King? Now, we're just going to read 12 again, 14 and 12. Con, book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12. And everybody have to say Con. Con. Oh. Con, book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Right. Now, hold that. Give me um, Luke um, 10 and 18. And we're going to go further down into Isaiah. Most I will, and we got time. Okay. Well, you guys already get you got the gist, man. You already got what we what we talking about. But most high willing, we can go a little further and 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 chop it up a little bit. But give me Luke, um, what I call ten and eighteen, Bobby Shaw. We're gonna read till twenty. Come, book of Saint Luke, chapter eighteen, verse twenty. I mean, Philip, verse eighteen. Saint Luke, chapter ten and verse eighteen. Everybody have a say, con. Con. Oh. Come, St. Luke chapter, chapter 10 and verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Right. Now, again, if you go, we, I can do, I can, I can do, um, what I'm going to do is bring out some points again. I remember 
on certain parts of what we read in and I'll highlight them when I put them on the notes on the video, most high willing. Or if I don't, in the next class, I can elaborate a little bit on it. But when you read into it, um, if you read different verses, like I said, Lucifer was used only in the King James Version. Then when you go to all the parts, it was called certain things, right? So when it says, um, oh, Salakia. Okay, so when it says... Oh, Salaki class. Hold on. Um, brother, go ahead and say something. I got to check on something real quick. Come, come. All right. So that's what it's, that's what we're going into, man. He, so let's, I'm going to read this again. St. Luke 10 and 18. It says, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Right. So like I was saying before, man, the, the scriptures, man, they always link up. Right. So we linking up Isaiah 14 and 12 with St. Luke chapter 10 and verse 18, right? Because like the brother was saying before, man, a lot of times you go into these uh, different churches and theological schools and all these things, they break these kind of scriptures down so wrong, man. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. They break these scriptures down so terribly, right? And have our people all bugged out and confused, don't know they left from their right, they don't know they up from their down, they don't know what's going on, man, because they break down these scriptures so incorrectly, man, so poorly. They just mash up the scripture so terribly. So now, through the spirit of the Most High Yahweh, the spirit is on uh, uh, of the brothers, man, to bring out what we bringing out as humbly as, as, mm -hmm. as we can, right? Uh, we're not exalting ourselves. We're not bigging up ourselves. We're not saying we hold it and now. We listen up your shot, right? Like in, you read that in uh, St. Luke, the 12th chapter, I believe it is, right? If I be lifted up, if Yahawashah be lifted up, then he'll draw all men. Then he'll draw all men unto him, uh, right? God. So that's God. just about in his last days, right? God. So, this is show that link up, man. Say Luke 10 and 18, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Talking about this spiritual demon, man. God, right? God, God. All praises, man. All praises, Love. man. Thanks for holding it down. Yeah, man. Brother is right. Okay. You, you know, this is deeper than what we are, what we're thinking, man. But read that again. Uh, Luke 10 and 18, Bob Bashar. Luke chapter 10 and 18. And let's elaborate on this mm -hmm. a little bit. Con, St. Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Right. What is that talking about? How quick they fall, fell out of rulership, man. How quick they fell because of their pride and their wickedness, man. Right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is spiritual, man. You know, you know, it, it, like I said, it's a little bit of everything. Right? Mm -hmm. They fell. As a as a nation that everybody looked upon, and and if you if you read to the end, when you get into when you start getting into Revelation and start breaking down certain prophecies, you can see their yeah, their man. final fall as a nation of people, man. Then you see their destruction where in Obadiah. You go to Obadiah one and eighteen, right? How are they going to be destroyed, man, as a nation of people, man? Right. So everything links up like the brother was bringing out earlier. When you start reading the scripture. You start seeing certain parts of it linking up, and that's how we get that full understanding, right? Read verse nine, uh, 19, select it. Con, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Right. That's what they are. Damn serpent dragons. I mean, they got different names. Give me Job uh, 30 and 29. These damn devils got a bunch of names, man. <laughs> Most high uh, hates these bastards. Yeah, right? Job, let's 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 be a little bit. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, as in what I'm reading here, but let's elaborate on that 19, man. Job 30 and 29, Bob Bashar. Huh. Book of Job, chapter 30 and verse. 29. When everybody have to say con. Con. Oh. 
Khan, the book of Job, chapter 30 and verse 29, it says, I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. Right. What's Job talking about? That he's a brother to dragon. Who's the dragon? Esau. Right? Because what? Right. Job is from the lineage mm -hmm. of Israel, right? Jacob is his forefather. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what Job, we're brothers to damn dragons, man. These evil twin, <laughs> right? That want to destroy us as a nation of people, man. Right, but let's go back to Luke, man. I just want to veer off a little bit. But let's go back to Luke um, 20, and um, and uh, I think we had uh, Salaki. Uh, Luke 10 and 20 now. Read 20. St. Luke. St. Luke chapter 10 and verse 20. It says, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Right. What is your how shall I get it into? Let's read verse 17. Let's get that. Let's get the understanding. Let's see what the how shall I was talking about in verse 20. Verse 17. Huh. St. Luke 10 and 17. And the 17th. Requat, return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Right. So what's your house I get into? Don't get excited because you can cast out demons in the name of your house Mashiach. Because that's not the end of this game. Yahusha is saying, listen, what matters is that your name is written in the book of life, man, in heaven. Right? Because guess what? The opposite is for them. Right? So, and that's getting into other things too, man. We get excited about things that are not worth anything, right? Mm -hmm. When we need to be focusing on the end goal, man, which is this kingdom, eternal rulership, right? Being one of the hopeful elect, man. That's what matters, man. And doing the work, obviously, obeying the law, statutes, and commandments, and having faith in Yahweh Shamashiach, right? That's what's going to get us to the kingdom, man. Not what we can do down here on earth. And guess what that gets into, too? Then you get these false prophets. What they doing? Always rebuking some demon, right? They'll touch you and they fall and all that. That's what people get excited about, man. Oh, man, this man is powerful. He can rebuke devils when it's nothing but damn lies. <laughs> Anyways, man. Give me Second Peter 2 and 4. So Yahushua is saying, don't get excited about that. Because that's not what really matters. Yes, that's part of the process, right? But this is what really matters, man. Getting rulership for everlasting, man. All right? Second Peter chapter 2, we're going to read. Um, we're going to read verse 4. Just give me verse 4. I know we brought this out earlier, but I want to bring it out again. Okay, come, come. Uh, hold on. I tell you what. Go ahead and just read from verse one on down. Let's read verse one on down. Then I want you to come. stop at verse five. Then give me second Ezra. Just to elaborate on the point I brought out earlier. I want to kind of go back to some things I brought up. But uh, read from one to five. Con. Book of Second Peter, chapter two and verse one. When everybody have a say, con. 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 Bring yeah. it out. Con, second Peter chapter two and verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even the denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Right. What's this getting into? Two parts. This getting into the two third of Israel. Then it's also getting into all the nations, all right? Because like I said, a false prophecy thing, prophet thing can go both ways, right? Because we got Israelites that are wicked and bringing false doctrines to their own people. Then we got these heathens that automatically that's what they do. <laughs> no heathen is teaching you that you're a damn Israelite. So you can scratch that. So all of them are bringing the them wickedness. But keep going, verse 2. Con, verse 2. And many shall follow their precarious ways, right. by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Right, right, keep going, let's keep going. Verse three. Verse three, 
and through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Right. So where it says, you know, they make merchandise of you, basically what is that what is that getting into? Just different things that they do to, to make profit off of us, man, as a nation of people. Right. They still do that to today. Again, a lot of this, when you go back to the Babylon. Right. And when you go back even to the book of Genesis in the beginning, there are certain things and traits that you see that it did back then that he did through different parts of the earth, man, and different generations in life. Right. And up to today, they're still doing the same thing. That's the part that that you get you is like, man, even to today, they're still oppressing us. So it's not like, oh, it stopped in the time of the Romans. Right. Or no, it stopped in the time of the ba uh, Babylonians. Right. We talking about every single rulership. They always found ways to destroy us, man. Right. During the, the time of Alexander the Freak, that's the same thing he was doing, man. Right. Every single one of them. If you start getting in deeper into the studies of each parts of the uh, of the times. Right. But anyways, give me uh, verse four. Go ahead. Con, verse 4. For if the Most High spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Right. We already know what that's getting into. All right. But keep going. Verse 5. Con, verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Right. So when it talks about the old world, you got to remember the world is broken into different parts. Like I brought out earlier, things are different. Fruits grow different than they used to do during the time of Noah. The air smelled different. Right. Everything is different. And when, again, when you get down deeper into the scriptures and when you start doing certain research for the sake of time, obviously, I'm not going to do that now. You're going to get some more information and insight on how things used to be back then. Right. The Bible touched some parts of this of this stuff, man. Right. Hold that. Give me second Ezra 14 and 10. All right. We're just going off a little huh. bit so I can just elaborate on this point of what I was talking about uh, earlier. <clears throat> I try to hit back on things I, I brought up, try to hit it with scripture. Try not to talk too much without a scripture. But yeah, Second uh, Ezra 14 and 10. Huh. The book of Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 10. Does anybody have a say, Khan? Khan, bring it up. Khan, um. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 10. For the world have lost his youth, and the time begin to wax old. Right. So you see that? During the time of Ezra, the law, the world itself has lost its youth, right? It's not <clears throat> as it was in the time before him, right? So imagine what it is now. You know, so we're talking about thousands of years later, right? Keep going, verse 11. Verse 11, for the world is divided into 12 parts, and the 10 parts of it are gone already, Right. and half of the 10th part. Right. So you're looking at just, just the whole parts of the earth is gone already. Now, when you do certain, you can, there's certain breakdowns on this that give you more understanding on it, but obviously we're not going to go into that. I just put that, like I said, um, I just brought that up just to elaborate on the point. All right, but give me our uh, Psalms 148 and 2. All right, we got to keep in uh, mind the most high controls everything, like I said earlier. All right, so even this wicked nation, he's the one controlling them. He's stirring their hearts, they, the, the hearts of their kings and rulers. He put Trump in office, and everything is for the full destruction of them. Everything is to allow uh, certain prophecies to happen. Don't think that Trump being in the office for only four years was for nothing. There's a reason why he was mm -hmm. in the office to trigger certain things between in, in, in insides of certain people. 
right? And you can see traces of that, right? To get people to a certain mm -hmm. mindset, to get all the rulers on the earth into a certain mindset. Because the whole goal is for him to bring all nations against each other, man. Right? Primarily against Babylon, mm -hmm. man. Right? But yeah, give me uh, Psalms 148 and 2. Oh, Rashad. Come on. Book of Psalms, chapter 148 and verse 2. Anybody have a say, Khan? Khan. 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 Book of Psalms, chapter 148 and verse 2. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Right. Keep going. Verse 3. Verse 3. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light right so what's this getting into every single thing was created for the most highest pleasure so every single thing that is of his creation right. should be praising him man. right every single thing but does certain nations do it of course not so certain nations love disobeying the most highest laws you got moab over there eating dogs and all bunch of abominable foods man then you got Esau's here, Esau passing all kinds of wicked laws, creating another Sodom and Gomorrah over here. Then you got the Hamites over there passing all kinds of wicked laws there too, man. Killing their own people, eating human flesh, right? Doing all kinds of abominable things, man. Right? And don't forget Ishmael, camel ride himself over there, worshiping stones. So basically... They, are, they do everything that's contrary to the most high. That's the point I'm trying to make. All these wicked nations don't put, don't worship their creator. Right? But we know through the scriptures it's not even meant for them to do. But I'm just saying the point is they don't even know who their creator is, man. They think they do, but they don't. Right? Give me Job 2, uh, 2 and 1. Let's get into this whole thing of people thinking... Because some people will say, well, you know, you know, uh, 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 these nations or Satan or whoever you want to call have power over them, over things, over the creator. Right. That they do their decision and their bid when they feel like doing it. When we know that's extreme, that's a big lie, man. Right. Job chapter uh, two and one. We're going to read down to six. Come Block me, Israel can uh oh yeah, Israel. <laughs> yeah, mute your phone, Israel. Bob Shaw, please mute your phone. Come, the water is the water. Right? Book of uh Job chapter two and verse one. Anybody have a say come? Come. Come, bring it up. Come. Book of Job, chapter 2 and verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord, Yahweh. All right. All right. So keep going so we can get the gist on the story. Then I'm going to elaborate on it. Huh. Verse 2. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan said unto the Lord, and Satan answered the Lord Yahweh, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Right. What does the word Satan mean? It just means an adversary, right? Someone that is opposed to the most high. But keep going. We're going we're going to elaborate on the point. Um, verse 3, and the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth the Most High and eschewed evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause? Right. So who, you know, when you get into this, a lot of times that's something that happens to us as a nation of people. These are things that we deal with even our own selves, right? 
we go through that whole temptation. We go through that whole, you know, uh, uh, thinking that, listen, man, we have to do things this certain way, right? We get tempted every time, and that's something that we deal with. And why is that? Because what? We're in the flesh, man. This flesh is weak, right? So the moral of the story here is the Most High is in control of every situation. The Most High knew Job wasn't going to fail, that he was going to be upright as he's always been, right? Even Job's wife told, told him to curse the Most High, right? But what? What Did Job do that? Of course not, man. I brought up this point to elaborate on the fact that, again, like I said, this, this class is a two-part class. Not only are we talking about the wicked, but we're talking about us as a people too, man, and how we're supposed to stand fast and be strong, right? Now, we're going to get into the story, and this story is more talking about how God is in control of everything, the most high, right? How Satan has to get his approval from God, the most high, to make any moves, man. How these other nations has to get the approval of the Most High to even do anything. And in some cases, they don't even know that it's the Most High that's staring them to do what they do, man. Sometimes they think it's some um, wicked God they worship it. Right? Sometimes they think it's some other belief that they're into that's causing them to live a certain way or make certain decisions. When we know the Most High controls everything, man. Right? And a lot of what he's doing, just like we brought up earlier, is all to fulfill certain prophecies, man. Is all to fulfill certain things to come into pass. Because that's what this whole thing is all about, man. Right? And the good thing is, we got the scriptures to show us that. We can read through the scriptures. But again, a lot of it too is learning from people that can teach you properly. That way you can gain the right understanding. Like I said, we all have different, you know, um, understanding about certain scripture. But as long as you're, you're on the main doctrine of what the teaching is, man. And not teaching some other uh, uh, wicked doctrine. Because now, what are you doing? You're dispersing the sheep, the flock, man. You know? Sometimes you live in a certain uh, body or doing things certain, uh, having certain grievances with your brother or cause certain problems within a certain uh, 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 people can cause other people to wither away, man. Right? But anyways, mm -hmm. I, I'm going off again. Let's go. Wow, where we at? Uh, verse four, right? Bring out verse four. Huh? Job two and four. Job chapter two and verse four. And Satan answered the Lord the hour and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Right. So what is he saying? He's just saying basically. Because you get some men, they'll go through so much, man. And they'll say, you know what? I, I can't take any more, man. I got to curse God, man, for this. Right? And that has happened. Some people, they don't even have to go to, through that much. <laughs> some people, they don't have food to eat for a day. All of a sudden, they're cursing the most high. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you get some people that are stronger in the spirit. They'll go through anything, man, and still stay strong. And still have faith in Yah uh, Mashiach, man. <laughs> Right. No. This is why. And what what will let me tell you, how did Job get to that point where he didn't fall? Right. From the works of Satan, where he didn't basically turn his back on God, man, most high. Right. Because he had faith and he had already built himself in the spirit that nothing can change him or move him away from the heavenly father. Right. So why are you wasting time? on stuff that is not going to help you or build you as, as an individual so during the time of trouble, you know who to call on or during the time of trouble, you have the, the mental state to withstand whatever comes your way. Guess what? You're going to fall like a like a, like a, 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 a weak fig tree, man, and wither away, right? And we know what the mm -hmm. outcome of that is going to be. You're going to fall into the two-third and get burnt, man. You know, part of that is falling out of the mm. truth. This scripture here is an example of that also. That if you're not strong in your faith, man, you can fall out. Nobody's exempt from this thing. And if Job had cursed the most high, guess mm. what? He would have he would have been on the other side, man. But we know what the outcome is. But go ahead and read verse six. Then we're gonna um um then we're gonna we're gonna leave this here because you guys already know what that's getting into. Um, because um, we need to get into other things. 
Uh, but read verse 6, Bob Bouchard. I do want to bring another example if I can. Go ahead. Come. Salakia, we left off on verse 5. Oh, okay, bring it out, King. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. Verse 5. You good. All praises. Uh, Job chapter 2 and verse 5. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he were cursed thee to thy face. Right. That's what basically <laughs> that's what he was oh. saying that Job is gonna happen to Job, man. Right? Let me work on him a little bit and see how quick he's gonna curse you, man. Right? Yeah. Let me let me go out here and be all kinds of wicked and see how he's gonna curse you. But let's do this, right? Because I got a few more things I want to bring out. Um, and I'm really trying to wrap it up at 12:30 if I can, so we can pray out and 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 be done with the class for tonight. Again, it might go up to one, but let me just get an example and see if I can go through it real quick. But give me First Kings uh, 22 and 1. First Kings chapter 22 and verse 1. Con. All right. First Kings chapter 22 and verse 1. Because I really want to leave time for brothers and sisters to ask questions. Uh, I don't know if my other brothers are here on the call because, you know, we can all answer, the, you know, the questions together. I know I got my brother here from New York reading, but uh, but anyways, um, yeah, go to First King, chapter twenty-two, and we're gonna read from verse one through six. We kind of we're gonna go through this a little quick, and I'll try to hit on the point, uh, quick, so that way we can uh, see if we can get a couple more things in here before we close out. Uh, look at First King, chapter twenty-two, and verse one. Anybody have a take on? Con. Um, Con, First Kings twenty two and one, and they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel, and it came to pass on the third year that Jehoshaphat the king of Judah came down to the king of Israel. Right. Verse three. Well, yep. Yeah, and going. the king of Salakia. Salakia. Verse three. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramah in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. Right, keep going. I'm going to expound on this stuff. Verse, oh, verse 4. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramah Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. Okay. Now, Verse what is this? Five, get, uh, and, uh, hold on one second. Now, let me just give you guys a little insight as he reads. Okay. Again, I can't elaborate on each verse because of time. But really what this is getting into is getting into the prophet uh, Micaiah. All right. I think he's the, he was the son of Imla. Um, Imla okay. And he was given a prophecy to the king not to go to war, right? But anyways, keep going. Verse um, verse five, Salaki. Go ahead. Verse five. Come, come. Verse five. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, "Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today." Right. He was just basically telling him to look up because that's what we always did as a nation. We never went to war or did anything without the Most High. Right. We always put him first. Right. This is why when we did certain things, he was with when he was OK with him. He was always with us. Right. This is why we won certain battles. We destroyed nation, especially under King David. You know, um, you know, we destroyed a lot of nation. And that could be another class we're going to get into just to talk about the power of Israel during the days of old, man. Right. But anyway, so like it. Keep going. Verse six. Let's keep going. Con, verse six. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramah Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord Yahweh shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Right. So basically, these men were basically giving him wrong information. Right? Now jump to verse 15. All right, let's get into this a little bit more. 
I just want to get it to, again, this is a two, two-fold uh, class, but it's primarily more dealing with our people, with the spirit of anything, you know, with the spirit of pride, rebellion, and, and, and other things, man, right? Things we're not supposed to do, even if it came from the, from the heathen nations, man, right? And I've always brought out the point of things that our forefathers did that were wrong, right? Because that's how we grow in person, man. That's how we grow as a nation of people. We don't grow by making the same mistakes they made and still being the same curse. Right? Basalaki. Go ahead. 15 and now we're going to read down to 35. All right? Let's go. Tom, uh, 1 Kings 22 and uh, 15. Yep. Jump down to 15. So he came. Tom, so he came to the king and the king said unto him, Micah, Micaiah, Salafia, shall we go against the Mark Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, go and prosper, for the Lord Yahweh shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Can I keep going? Verse 16, and the king, huh, and the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord Yahweh said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Right. So a that's self-explanatory the there. King Salakia. Oh, Salakia, King. I know I told you to keep going. But verse 17 basically is more is talking about more of the prophecy. Right? We'll keep going. Verse 18. Khan, verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? Yep. Salakia. And he said, yes. Salakia, I know I keep stopping Khan. you. But yeah, real quick, I'm going to just hit on them if I stop you. But as you can see there, he went to Jehoshaphat basically saying, Listen, man. This guy is not for me, right? He thought in his head that w that was a, a, a evil prophecy, but in the whole time, the Most High was the one that gave him the message, man, right? Micaiah, right? The message to tell the king at the time. But well, keep going, verse nineteen. Con, verse nineteen, and he said, "Hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord Yahweh. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne." And all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. Verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Hold that, hold that. So you see that? So basically, why did I bring this point? Twofold. We're not to be stubborn when we hear the words of the Most High. And who are the word? Uh, who are the mouthpiece of the Most High? His prophets, right? Are the mouthpiece of the Most High. So when they warning you not to do certain things, just like we do today, what do our people listen? No, they don't, right? There's nothing new under the sun. These were things that happened in the past. So what? The spirit, a spirit appeared unto the Most High. He had to get permission from the Most High, okay, to go to be a lying spirit to the prophets that were for him. All right. So they can hype him up and say that he's going to be good to go if he was to go to war. But we're going to keep reading so we can get the, uh, the gist of the story uh, before uh, 1230. But keep going. Verse 22. Come on, verse 22. And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Where, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him. And prevail also, go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord Yahweh hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, and the Lord 
have spoken evil concerning thee. Verse 24. But Zedekiah, the son of Kenah, Shalakia, went near and smote Micah on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? See that? And Micaiah said, Shalakia. Nah, keep going. Verse 25. And Micaiah said, Behold, Thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, take Micaiah and carry him back to Amnon, to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, thus saith the king, put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. Okay, hold that. Hold that. Isn't that what some of our people do when we teaching them and trying to give them the word of the Most High? I bet you if they could, they will create a cell right there where we stand and lock us up, man. Right? If they could, they will pray that thunder come and hit us in the head, a lightning and kill us where we stand just because we're telling them who they are and how they're supposed to wake up as a people. And that's exactly what happened here. So for him doing the work of the Most High, which is the same affliction our forefathers went through. This is the same affliction that the, all the prophets of old went through, man. So when you're going through it today, you're not you're nothing compared to what they used to go through. These guys used to get locked up immediately just for certain prophecies that they've revealed, man. That's the same thing that happened in the book of Daniels, man, when they got thrown into the fire. Right? Because we got wicked Israelites that only want to hear sweet things, man. And who do they go to for that? They go to this all these wicked nations. Because that's all they teach and preach. Right? But Slacky, we're almost dead. Verse 28. Khan, verse 28. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord Yahweh have not spoken by me. Mm. And he said, Hearken, O my every one of you. Wow. You see verse that? Read that again. Read Salakia. verse 28 again. Khan, verse, uh, 1 Kings 22 and 28. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord Yahweh have not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O my people, every one of you. Now, basically, he's trying to say, if the word of the Most High comes out void, guess what? Then that means he didn't speak to him, man. But we're going to find out what the result of the story is. Because we know that was the word of the Most High. Right? But keep going, and we're going to get right to the point and the moral of the story here. Verse 29. Verse uh, 29. Right? Right. Keep going. Verse 29. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. But the king of Syria commanded his 30 and two captains that had ruled over his chariots, saying, fight neither with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. Keep going. 32. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. Right. Keep going. Verse 33. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. Keep going. And a certain man drew a gun, and a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host. 
for I am wounded. You see that? Because he didn't listen to the word of the Most High. Right? You see what happened to him in the battle? Right? He thought he was wise and thought he knew everything and didn't want to listen to the prophet. So that's exactly what happens to us as a people. When we keep warning our people to turn from their wicked ways, right? To retrieve from death, man. Because every time you go in that way, you're basically leading yourself and your family to death. Right? When you follow a certain doctrine and follow in certain ways, man, right? Worshiping false God and listen to the wrong people, right? Don't want to listen to your own brother that is teaching you wisdom, man. Right? We teaching you from the scriptures. You get some people that will tell you, stop reading the Bible, man. <laughs> what is your opinion? Tell me what you think. No, I'm not going to stop reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, because uh. if I stop reading the Bible, then what am I? I'm just basically doing my own will at that at that point, man. Right? right? We come out, thus said the Lord, man. So when you hear the, you know, when you hear the man right. of the Most High teaching this word, man, park in your hearts, Israel. Right? Because it's for your good. That way you don't die, man, in your own wickedness. Right? But anyways, read verse 35 and we're wrapping that up. We're done with this. Verse 35, 1 Kings 22, 35. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians and died at even, and the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. Right? You see that? So he died because he didn't listen to the voice of the Most High. That's the moral of the story. Right? And the prophets are the ones that, that bring out this word, man. Right? Don't be boastful, prideful. Don't think you know everything. Don't think you don't, you, nobody can tell you anything, man. Right? A lot of, there are so many countless stories like this in the scriptures that we can go through, man. That talks about the wickedness of our people. And them being stubborn and stiff-necked, man. Right? Give me Psalm 69 and 28. Right? We got to keep in mind that is a reward for these devils, man. Right? Their names are going to be blotted out, man. There is no redemption for them. They're going to be destroyed for everything that they did. We're going to we're going back to where we were talking about early in the class. I'm just going to get a couple more scriptures. Then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, then if brothers got questions or anything else, they can bring it up. And um, and uh, we can we can wrap up the class. But yeah, just bring that out. Psalms uh, 68, uh, 69 and 28. Con. Book of Psalms, chapter 69 and verse 28. Can everybody have a say, Con? Con. Con, Con. Psalms, chapter 69 and verse 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. And not be written with the righteous. Right. You see that? So their names are going to be blotted out, man. Let them be blotted out, man. That's what. That's why we brought up that prayer, man. The prayer against the wicked. Right? That's what we pray for, man. That their destruction comes quicker than... <laughs> come quick, man. Right? So we can be redeemed from this wicked kingdom, man. You know, you got to realize these are the childs of the devil, man. Give me John 8 and 44. All right. These are the, <laughs> these are evil devils, man, you're dealing with, man. These nation of people. All right. There's no change in them, man. Let's get the last scripture and we're going to have brothers um, ask their questions. Then we're going to uh, try to wrap up the class. John chapter 8 and verse uh, 45. While we sure. Con, the book of St. John, chapter 8 and verse 44. Everybody have a say, Con? St. John, chapter 8 and verse 44. It says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's right, man. 
These nations are, are nations of liars, right? They come up with different ways to lie to everybody, right? Just to keep them ahead, right? And again, this is from the beginning, man. The Edomites you see today are not a different nation of people, right? That's the same Esau that was born in Genesis 25, man, right? The same seed of that line, all right? So with that, um, hopefully the class was edified. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Um, if I was able to do that through the spirit of the Most High, I have done my job. Water for the brothers uh, and their input. Water for the precepts. Um, you know, I'm sorry I couldn't get too detailed in a lot of the, the teaching from tonight. But, um, you know, time, you know, I try to keep things at a certain time. That way we can, you know, because some of us got to go to work tomorrow before the Shabbat. So that way we can get some rest, you know, go to work and, 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 and go home. So with that, um, is any of the uh, HOI brothers on the call um, that want to bring something out? Any uh, any HOI body on here? Soldiers, that's what I mean, or brothers in general. Um, if you want to bring anything out, no, you, can, you can definitely do that. Oh, go ahead, King. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I just want to do the brother, younger brother earlier. Um, um, uh, my least brother, um, Jezreel. Um, but another brother earlier was talking about the, um, you know, the mark of the beast, and it's just a real quick synopsis on it. You know, um, when the Most High always speaks about the left hand and the right hand, he talks about the mark of the beast being in the skin and the right hand. And just to talk, just to um, further expound on what the elder says about balance if you got two left hands that's a problem if you got the right your, if your right hand is filled with wickedness and your left hand is already dealing with wickedness or the, your right hand is filled with the mark of the beast and your left hand is already uh deemed as as, as the wicked hand as the as the you know the wicked part of the, the wicked hand that's unbalanced right there you know what i'm saying so the mark of the beast really goes into like what the brother was saying the revelations and and um these false prophets, you believe in this and being destroyed from these other doctrines. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, as far as it being in your, uh, being your forehead, these other doctrines being in your mind, you know what I mean? So the mark of the beast, um, has a lot to do with, um, if you just would read, let me see, um, you can go to Matthew 25 and 41, which was kind of, um, what kind of talks about, um, the most high, um, it says, then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, um, into the eternal fire, pre eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So, you know, the the the, the mark of the beast being in the in the right hand means that's you just off, man. There's no balance. As just to say, the brother was talking about balance. Everything is balanced. If you got the mark of the beast in your left hand, and you and your uh, in the right in your right hand, and your left hand is already the wicked the wicked part of the the darker part of the uh you know the wicked part. That's just you just off, man. You know, so the mark of the beast, you all the way, you all the way off. You know what I mean? That's that's in in, in a real quick uh, you know, of course there's a lot more verses that could confirm that. But just so you know, real quickly, I just wanted to expound on that. Con, great synopsis. Yeah, grind con, man. Yep, that's a quick way to to to, to do it. And and yeah, man, the brother <laughs> hit that's the point right there. But, you know, I only just recommend it because, you know, Israel, man, <laughs> Israel wants you to break everything down with scriptures, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what we should be doing. Right. We got to we got to prove all things. All right. So but, yo, you hit it right on the head. You see, you know, all praises, man. You know, this is why, you know, it's great to work with my brothers, man. You know, he, he chopped it up real quick and served it real quick. You know, but yeah, brother, if you're still on the call, definitely watch those videos. That way you can get a more in-depth teaching on it. You can actually get the precepts um, because that helps a lot with the understanding. But, you know, my brother here just, you know, gave you a quick um, uh, quick understanding on that. Um, but with that, is there anybody else that has anything else, anything else to bring out? Now, keep in mind, we got the um, uh, Feast of Hanukkah coming up, um, uh, Hanukkah, so, you know, on the 8th of, uh, of this month. Um, so if you in the city where you have a body to fellowship with, you know, that, you know, like the elder always say, man, you know, you know, this, they have time to celebrate their wicked holidays. So let's make time to celebrate our righteous wow. days, man. So if you can, if you're close to a city that has a body, 
you know, try to go out and fellowship with your brothers and sisters, man. Don't sit home and, and, and say, oh, I'll just celebrate at home. Oh, go ahead, King. Go ahead. Like, yo, do you have any um any any um uh part of the body in South Carolina or North Carolina? What's the closest thing you got to that? In North Carolina, I know we got something coming up there, but I don't know how um okay. you know um up and running it is yet. But I know we have a brother out there that is you know building the body over there. Um, you know, I can I will say just email us. That would be the best thing I'll say right now. Because we got, you know, brothers that are higher than me that can give you better information on this. All right? I don't want to give you the wrong information. Right, I need it. I need an email address. Yep. Let me give what it to I you right now. Your email address. Yep. Yep. I'll give okay, it to you right on, now. Grab you ready? Hold on. Quick. Uh, give me two. Yes, sir. Give me that. No, you're good. House Go ahead, of brother. Israel. It's House of Israel Atlanta <laughs> at gmail.com. All right. House of Israel Atlanta at gmail.com. All one word. All right. Uh, okay. Brother Ariya, he's a brother over me. He can definitely help you with that information. Or one of the other senior brother like Shao Par or um or Amaf, okay? Keep uh, Chief uh, Ephraim, okay? Um, but you know, gotcha. uh, the officer over me, Ariya, he deals with the email heavily. So if there's anything out there that has to do with right. stuff like this, he, he he deals with the um the body on that. I don't do too much yeah. of that, okay? But yeah, all praises, man. So email us, just email us, email us your info, and he'll reach out to you and give you more information on that, so that way you can you can worship with the body, okay? Come, come, shalom, brother. Shalom, all, all praises, man. About to fall back to sleep, so. Come, come. Con. Anybody um, else got anything here. else to bring out? Um, Salakia. Oh, okay. Hold on, sister. I think the brother says Salakia first. Yeah, after the brother, you can bring it out, sister. Okay, go ahead, brother. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, brother, I was a hot man. Um, you know, I just gotta make want to salute all of my brethren and sisters that's on the call. It was an honor to uh, uh, read for all the for the class. You know, most high willing, everybody wrote the scriptures down and got edified, man. I just want to, I didn't want to sign off like that, just hang up. I want to just, you know, make sure I show love and, and, and show, give a quick shalom to all my people. You know what I mean? So I want to give a hearty shalom to all you brothers and sisters on the call. Most high willing, man, y'all going to be blessed. And, you know, I'll throw up some strong prayers for all of my brothers and, and sisters in this truth. Khan, Khan, and the water, King, I really appreciate uh -huh. Yeah, getting on the call, man. All praises uh -huh. to the most high. Water. You know, most high willing, you can come on and do it some more because we need more brothers to help with this because <laughs> it's primarily me and Ari all right now, and we can use more brothers, Ari. Right? <laughs> come on. 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 The most I open up some doors for me, and I can make that happen on a consistent basis. Man. That's right. Most That's right. I willing. Appreciate you, King. Appreciate you. Okay. Much love to water for for the reading. All right. All praises, man. All okay. right. So you heading out? Man. Yeah, con, con. I'm heading out, man. Uh, I was a ab heading out. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh Shai. H O Y to the Chariots Fly. Brother Ari, man. Strong, strong class, man. Strong class, my brother. All praise, All praise to the Most High. Shalom. 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 All right, go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Shalom, everybody. Um, I was going back to what you were saying earlier about uh, how, uh, you know, how the parents, they want their children to be like them. Well, um like with my family, uh, a lot of times they're trying to continue to get me to read the Quran because I'm coming from an Islamic background. And so mm. my father was saying, like, well, that he brought me into the Islam. So he was kind of feeling like I'm, you know, not listening to him or, or that it's being disrespectful in some way for me not to 
stay with the religion that he feels that he brought me into, which was the Islam. And so my brother was like saying that he had a surprise for me. And, uh, well, no, he didn't say a surprise. He said he wanted to show me something. So I was asking him to give me some hints for it. I thought it was, you know, uh, some money that he had or something that he got in the mail, and he just wanted to show me. But he said, well, just come and see, you know, and he kept you know, not being vague about it. So I went over there, and when I went over there, he wanted me to, he wanted to show me something to read in the Quran. And then he's like saying, you know, basically saying things about, well, Prophet Muhammad said this and that and things like that, or who he who he thinks is a prophet. And, um, you know, so I had a dream last night, and the dream was showing that we were, uh, I was in a, uh, like a, bungalow house with some fam with some of my family members and they were saying that they wanted to purchase three doors to protect the house and I said that we just needed just one door and mm-hmm. and <laughs> to me it just seemed very uh uh like prophetic to me in the dream because I was telling them that we just need one door uh right. you know because it was fr- frustrating to deal you know, with uh, with them constantly trying to get me to uh, come back into uh, Islam. And uh, I'm, you know, done with that. You know, that's not what I'm into, but they're still talking to me as if they see me as being Muslim or still being a part of that, and they just are not accepting of this. So uh, I was saying to myself that this is uh, definitely... Hello? All right, Israel, I think I got dropped off the call again. Uh, I'm going to call back right now. Salakia, bear with me. Let me see if I can uh, call back. Uh. Welcome, and thank you for choosing free conference. If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please wait and you will be joined into the conference. There are 16 participants in the conference. Please announce yourself. Okay, Shalawan, Shalawan, got cut off again. Yeah. Hey, sis. Yeah, sorry about that, family. Yeah, I keep getting caught off. Yes, yeah, sister. I know. Okay, um, you said you, I heard the dream. I did hear the dream part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the, 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 the dream catcher is not here tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, yes, Ari, Ari, the yes, dream not. chopper, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was listening. No, no I, folly, I was listening. No folly, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, my brother um, Ari, be going uh, through those dreams, man. Um, but John, Salakia. John, is, is that Arya there? Oh, he fell off. I'm not sure if he's on the call. No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, oh okay. Come on. Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, that's him right yeah. there. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, so, so what I, so, Shalom, so what I was saying is that, uh, uh, did you hear everything that I said, Arya? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Come. yeah. Yeah, so, so, uh, that, that was frustrating when my brother, uh, called me over there to to you know he wanted me to read the quran and he knows that i'm into this truth and you know he could have just you know told me uh you know to to because you know he could have just told me the verse and everything over the phone because it was so ice cold the other night but anyway i had a dream that we were that i was in the bungalow with some of my family members and they were saying that they wanted to get three different doors to help protect the house and I was telling them we just need one door because it would just be too much of an expense to get three doors. And then I said we could just do karate to, like, <laughs> protect ourselves. I don't know why I mentioned karate. Right. But then when I woke up, then I was like, hey, that was, you know, pro- I think a prophetic dream because I was saying one door. You know, and I think it has right. something to do with uh, with them trying to get me into Islam constantly. <laughs> yeah, so. Right. Um, you say you had a scripture you want to bring out? Who me? Uh, actually. Oh. Oh no no he's talking to me. Not uh, 
Um, yeah, the he's sister. talking to me. Okay. And so, so then when I, before I went to bed, you know, I always read scripture before I go to bed. And, you know, the Lord had me to read Isaiah 64 and verse 5. And I thought that that was spiritual in the spirit, too. 64 verse 5. Uh. Uh, uh, I'll bring that out. I'll bring that out real quick for the brother Ari. Um, this is Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 5. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned, and those is continuance, and we shall be saved. Uh, 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 so the uh. So, so what I was thinking about when I read that is that those of us who st- stay strong in the faith and continue, then we have a reward, you know, to look forward to. So that's, you know, uh, you know, from staying strong in the faith and not being swayed to all these different doctrines that are not the truth. That's right. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. There you go. Come on. Yeah. Lucky guy, okay. Hey, um, <laughs> uh, sister, are you done? Or did you have another point you want to bring yes, out? I just yes. got one more point. Yes, I'm, yes, oh, I'm done. You're done? Okay, Khan, Khan. All praises, Sister Duwada, for that. Really appreciate you. All praises. Um, just to wrap this class in a whole nutshell, uh, to answer my brother's question, I'm just going to read uh, something here real quick, um, just to elaborate on the myth of Lucifer, okay? Because I was asked that question, do I know who he is? Now I'm going to read this real quick, then after that we can just wrap up class, really, because it's uh it's almost one. Um, <clears throat> so this is just going back to the lesson and the scriptures that I brought out earlier, just to elaborate on the point that Lucifer is a nation of people that were in a high place and rule, rulership uh, place, okay? And if you can le- look at the different versions, you can see that it was mentioned as something completely different, right? But anyways, I'm going to read this. Lucifer has nothing to do with Satan slash the devil. He is not an angel of light and music who led a rebellion in heaven and was cast down to earth with a third of the angels. Lucifer is simply a title attributed to a long dead king of Babylon. All right. The name Lucifer appears exactly once in some English translation of the Christian scriptures. In the Old Testament in Isaiah 14 and 12, which is what we went into. All right. So I'm going to bring up a couple of versions that were brought up. Right. It says this is the King James Version. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst wicken the nation? Right. We went through it. We got some scriptures to prove the point that it was an actual nation of people. Right. Uh, let's read the NIV and it reads, how you have fallen from heaven, morning star, right? Something completely different, son of the dawn. And again, if you look into those meanings, you're going to see that there were actual rulers at those times. And that was what they were called, right? It says, you have been casted down to earth. You who once led low the nations, right? That's the NIV uh, 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 version. And we know in this context, it's just talking about them being brought down to a low state. Right. And in the end will be their destruction. Uh, the ESV version, how you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn, how you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. Right. So we know from the garden that that's the nation that basically, you know, uh, deceived of the nation. Right. I'm going to read one more part and we're going to be done. So who is this Lucifer this morning star, son of the dawn? If we read the, in the beginning of the chapter, we find in verse 4, which is what we did, that Isaiah is prophesying to the king of Babylon. All right? So sometimes it's good that we read things in context because that can give us a little understanding. Then we apply precept upon precept also. Right? Then he says, probably Nebuchadnezzar II, conqueror of Jerusalem. So Lucifer is a title att- attributed directly to a living, real human person. All right, not no damn angels. The prophet is comparing him to the planet Venus because of his power and influence in the world, just like I brought out. Right, they were a very powerful nation, they influenced all the nation. When you read in the book of Ezekiel 28, it talks about how great they were and what they were compared to to precious stones. Right, along with the image of this star being cast down to the earth, 
as a result of his wickedness, right? Then what did we also do? We apply that to us too. That if we're wicked, guess what? We're going to be condemned also as a people, right? So with that said, that's hopefully I answered my brother's question to the best of my ability. Um, I pray that the Most High uh, give me a humble spirit to deal with my people and love my brother in sincerity. With that, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Shimei, Awashai. Double honors to my elders, H-O-Y. And, uh, yeah, go ahead, sister. You can go ahead. Go ahead, sis. Well, I'll give you for the class. And I just have a general question about um, if I'm forced up against taking this COVID-19 test, what is H-O-I doing? Are we taking the test if we have to, say, for work or travel or medical reasons, or are we just totally just saying, hey, forget it? Uh, Ariel, are you still on the call? Not the vaccine. Oh. Khan, please, can you answer Khan. that? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, King. Yeah, sister, my opinion, I, I can't say nothing for anybody, but in my opinion, I'm not taking that test. I'll tell you what that is, man, because they say the the, the vaccine has DNA manipulation. <laughs> like, like B, DNA manipulation. I've never heard of anything like that before, right? And there's something that is called VMAT2, which is technically a God gene, which is that Israelite has, which have your, um, your belief system, which connects you to the most high. Now, there's a video of a person that took the vaccine, and all of a sudden, he said he just, like, he don't believe in God no more. Like, he said he couldn't feel God in his, in his belief, in his system. And I say that to say, would, would you see the so-called white man and trust in their vaccines when their track record is, is, is wicked as hell? Right? Tuskegee experiment, syphilis, AIDS, HIV, right? The Black Plague, all these different incidents that happen over every 100 years. The so-called white man looked for ways to try to destroy Israel. And now he's mad as hell because the most High is putting curses on him. So now he's trying to go with a last-ditch effort. That's right. That's what it says in Revelation 12 and 12. Time. The dragon going to come down with great wrath. He's trying everything. He's putting out all the stuff. So now he took the he took the so-called COVID-19 that started in China and brought it all the way to New York, America. And now he puts New York as the number one place for it. Where black, Latino, and American people is at. So now he's setting everything up. He wants everybody to take it now. It says New York is going to be one of the first nations on in America, the 170,000 vac vaccinations by December 15th. And they already put it in checkpoints in different places to try to force people to take it. All right? And, so and everything is all spiritual. Everything is all spiritual. So, word okay. to the wise, I'll say to you, in my opinion, I wouldn't take it. You know, trust take in the it. most high. Why the, why the hell you need a vaccine for you're not really sick. We're not sick. The, not, the, not the vaccine you know? itself, the test. They're just trying to force the test right, on right. you. Right. That's what I'm saying. They're trying to force the test on people because what? So they can try to get people with a COVID. Right. And I trust that, that the vaccine, regardless if I'm positive or negative, which I trust the most high, it doesn't matter. But that they would be right. forced. Like, once I feel like once I'm in the system, they think I'm flexible and they might try to continually pressure me. You know what I'm trying to say? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course they're going to try to pressure you because what? That's that life and death situation right there. <laughs> That's that you're either going to follow the society or you're going to have to trust in the Lord. Uh, let me get to like 30 and 15. Con. Right? And this is another reason why, why we, we always tell brothers and sisters, hey, get in these class, take these notes. You know? Increase your faith. Building your spirit. Building your faith. Pray that the Most High leads you in His way, because man, stuff is going is going down right now, man. You got you got a uh, they got on the news already that a, a Hebrew Israelite, as they want to say, so called, um, attacked a man with a machete, an Edomite, and they doing what? They starting that spin, that propaganda spin again, and it's not a coincidence. They are starting their what? December, between December and what? The winter season, like they did last year with the Jersey shooting. So well, now what? They're trying to start that propaganda again. They're trying to roll it up again while the vaccine is coming out at, at the same time. 
Because everything is what? Everything is pointed towards Israel, towards us. The white man will find any kind of manipulation, any kind of scheme to try to get us and try to wipe us out. That's why the class that the brother brought out today is a beautiful class, man. Right? You know who's your enemy is. He's going to try everything. So bring that out, King. Okay? But, but for be- those that's not keeping the Lord's commandment, <laughs> look what the Most High going to do. <laughs> bring it out. Khan, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 15. Health and good as a state of the uh, body. 38, 38. Oh, 38. Salakia, King. 38, King. Khan. Khan, Salakia. Apologize. 38 and 15. Khan. Khan. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 15. He that sinned before his ma- maker, let him fall into the hands of the physician. You see, the, 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 the law said he that sinneth before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. That means the Most High is going to serve them up to, to these wicked doctors. Those that are two-thirds of Israel, that ain't want to keep his commandments. Most High got a billion ways to, to kill a person. Man. And there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. Most High got a, infinite ways to kill somebody. You know, and that's just one of the ways that people can go out in these last days. You know, through COVID. Some might go out through COVID. Some might go out through the nuclear missiles. Some might go out by getting hit by a car. Some might go out in the shootout. There's many different ways, man. Because the Lord is giving what? Judgment. You got the rapper today, Casanova, who had to turn himself in and is locked up now. Probably got life in jail now. You have like three or four rappers that got killed in the, in the, in the past two weeks. We've never seen so many rappers get killed in a year. Ever. Why? Because the Most High is marking Israel for death. And in keeping his commandments. Right? So I say that to say, sister, I wouldn't take it. Right? Like the sons Joshua asked for me in my house, we're going to serve the Most High. That's right. <laughs> so I yield the floor back to the brother. And that's lucky. I had a, I had a quick uh, scripture I wanted to give the sister as well. Um, the sister with the dream. Con, <laughs> uh, go ahead, uh, John chapter 10. You know, pertaining to the door. Pertaining to that door. Because I'm in that Con. same situation too, sister. With the, Con, with the oh Islam God. crap and all of this. I just left that, you know, a year ago when Con. I first got in the truth. So all this Con. Islam and stuff, you know, you got family members, you know, sending you, sending you Quran verses and this. And I'm like, come on, man. Come on, man. It's, it's over for that, man. And, and that's funny because your dream is what? It said three doors. Now, if they have so much faith in Allah, why the hell do you need three doors? Oh, they don't even know three doors. They don't even need a door. They, they just, just have faith in Allah. He's going to protect them. You see? But they don't really got faith. They say they got faith because they feel convenient and confident when they're worshiping the rock. Right? But now when that, when that damn fear comes at them, Right? When death is knocking at their door, now they don't know how to respond. <clears throat> but when they see you following the ways of the Lord, now your brother, he feels like he's left alone. He feels like he's still stuck in the dark, and now he's trying to drag you with him without even knowing it. But look what Christ said. John chapter 10 and verse 1. Come. Verily I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. The same as a thief and a robber. So your dream with the door, right? That one door that you were speaking out, that door is Christ. That door is the truth. Uh Now, when they come in with three doors, that's them leading you astray. That's them leading you to one door of Christianity, one door of Islam, and one door of atheism, whatever the hell they want to call it. But it's not the the right door. It's not the truth. Uh Right? And those three doors represent what? Their false religion trying to have it protect them. Yeah. They don't need just one door. They need three. Mm-hmm. So if the enemy break through the first one, hey, they got a backup. Right? They got a strong defense. But guess what? All three doors going to be finished. Because the strong tower of defense is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's not Allah. Yeah. It's not Allah. And they're going to find that out. Like when the COVID hit, what, what happened? What happened to Mecca? It was empty. 
because they was all scared of that COVID. But the Hebrew Israelites were still out there teaching. If Islam is so real, why the hell ain't these people out there teaching about Allah, this and that, out in the COVID? Because what? Islam is a false religion. It's a bunch of lies. A stolen religion. Not just stolen. It's false religion. That's right. Made up religion. Mm. Right? And they, if we talk about prophet, the prophet Muhammad is the last prophet, that's a damn lie. Like the brother said earlier. If you, you can't be a prophet of the Most High if you're not Israel. You're a false prophet. You're an antichrist. And Muhammad is definitely an antichrist because he tried to steal the glory of Israel. That's right. And tried to put his damn name in the story. And even lied and said he had a vision from Gabriel. Right? So the Lord said what? In verse 9, I am the door. Matter of fact, verse 7, then say Yahweh shot unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And Yahweh shot is what? He's the word of God. He's the truth. He's also the door. Because he's the middleman that get us to the most high. So the doors that your, your family is using, hey, one door might be Prophet Muhammad, <laughs> as they want to call it, or Allah, but it's not Yahweh Shah. Right? Verse 9, mm. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief cometh not. Who's that thief? Islam. They try to steal our Bible, try to steal our history. Before they steal, right? Try to steal our heritage and to kill. Muhammad forced a lot of Israelites to be Muslim. And he killed them with the sword and to destroy. Now our people are destroyed today because now they think they belong in Islam. When even their own Quran, it says no person, no, no Muslim is supposed to be friends with a Jew or a Christian. Where even in the same Quran, it says, go back to the Bible, which is the book of the law, and read it. The same Quran where it says, no Muslim supposed to argue with the children of the book. <laughs> right? Oh. I am come that they might have life. That door that you walk through, with you'll have life. And that they might have it more abundantly, which is the kingdom of heaven. Because these Islamic jihadists ain't getting the damn kingdom of heaven. They're going to get put in chain of subjection like Esau and Edom. Huh. Right? So I say that to say, sister, you stay strong in the faith. Don't let nobody try to pull you away. You know, they, they, even if they think they, they're doing it in a good way, nah, don't let them try to pull you away. Seduce you with wicked spirit. Don't let that. You call it that, man. You call it that. You know? Because at the end of the day, Allah is a moon god that they serve him, and they don't even know it. That's why you see the, the flag of Islam, it got a moon and a crescent. They serving the moon god and they're over north. Yeah, yeah. Right. The, the water, brother. So I give the floor back that. to the brother. Khan, all praises. Khan, Khan, all praises. I give the floor back to the brother Ari. A beautiful class Khan. to the brother again. Khan, Khan, the water, all praises. May he get the glory, man. All praises to the most high, you know. Hey, again, uh, class, the water for joining the class. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, hopefully we were able to edify you, uh, my brothers, you know, bringing out the scriptures and, and us bringing out the word. Uh, we're here to serve the most high. Right. We're here to feed the flock and wake up our people. Uh -huh. And we, you know, we, you know, we just give honors to the most high for even opening our eyes to even have this understanding. Like uh, we always just bring it up to you, sister. You know, don't let nobody turn you away, man, from what from the truth, man. Right. Stay grounded. You know, and this applies to, uh, you know, other sisters on the call, too, and brothers, obviously. Right. Stand strong in the faith, man. Right. Let's endure to the end. Matthew 24 and 13. Right. Let's not fall short right now. Let's encourage each other in the spirit, man. Right. And and we know what the reward is, you know, and it's worth every bit of it. But anyways, with that, I will yield the floor to Aria. Aria, if you don't mind, can you pray us out? Um, You know, I'll appreciate it. All right. Wow. Huh, that's okay. So, oh, praise you. Beautiful class again for the brothers. And great testimonies, good precepts, good breakdowns, good reading for the brother. I was the ob. H-O-I-N-Y-C. Like we were saying earlier, you know, trying to have more brothers, you know, put their brick in, in the class as well. 
That's right. You know, reaching and uh, reading and teaching as well, you know, because you right. as a body, so we all got to grow. That's right. As a body, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. That's right. You know? So with that, I'll give you at least 25 seconds. Whichever way I feel comfortable praying, and we're going to close out another week in a Thursday night class. Let's continue to build. Let's continue to take notes. Let's continue to keep our faith in the most high. He's going to deliver us out of all things. So with that, we say, oh, praise you, Yahweh, Shem Shai. This is the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to read in English first, and then close it out in Paleo Hebrew. So Lord's Prayer, uh, Matthew chapter 6, and verse 9. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 So this is the Paleo Hebrew for the Lord's Prayer. Abinawa, Shabbat Shemayim, Kodash, Hayah, Shanka, Yahawa, Malakovka, Tabaa, Ratizaka, Hayah, Aisha, Ratiza, Kawa, Hayah, Bashemayim, Latanawa, Laham, Pau, Yawam. Ah, once again, a beautiful class. All uh, praise to the brothers and sisters that's on his call. Uh, most high winning next week. Uh, Number eight, water. Tuesday is going to be the opening for the Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah, as you want to call it. And most I will, everybody have a beautiful night. Let's continue to build. Let's continue to push for this kingdom. Call me, Yashar. 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 Bye.